Hello everyone, and welcome to Ultimate Fanfiction, so we are back with an interesting series on what if Naruto was the heir of Arceus. But before we start, I just want to remind you to please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button if you enjoy my content. Let's start the story. A long time ago before the elemental nations were even born, the entire continent was under one rule. The land was filled with mysterious creatures with powerful abilities, people became friends with them, and some battled alongside them. Nothing could be more right in the world of Pokemon, and then a group of humans who sought to control the world came and began using Pokemon for their evil ways. Team Rocket, under the leadership of Giovanni, began stealing Pokemon from other trainers. One boy rose above them all and fought valiantly against the evil Team Rocket, but alas in the end they proved to be too strong. Sorrow began to fill the hearts of many, many trainers as they tried to fight against the evil team and failed like their fellow trainer. When all hope seemed lost, the god of Pokemon itself appeared before them, using its divine powers he sealed away the power and abilities of his children inside his seventeen plates. When the powers were gone the Pokemon disappeared as well, the god itself also disappeared as all of its power was gone, the plates turned into a dull grey color and fell to the ground where they sunk and vanished from the world. The evil team Rocket became enraged, so using their high-level technology and DNA samples that they took from the Pokemon that they had captured to try to create a powerful creature. However, they failed and instead they created a horrible monster that was death itself. The monster stood over a thousand feet tall the body was pure black with horns in its head, it had only one single eye. It was a blood-red color with six rings and nine tomos. The one thing that distinguished it the most was its ten massive tails that with a single swipe could change the landscape. Its power destroyed the continent. The monster was dubbed the Jubi the Ten-Tailed Monster. Humans for years hid from the monster, their cities were gone, their technology was useless. Trainers who were brave tried to catch the creature in a pokeball. Nothing worked. Humans were driven near to extinction. When all hope was thought to be lost, a man appeared out of nowhere and battled the monster, for ten days and nights the two fought. In the end the man used a special power and defeated the monster by sealing it into his body, when people saw this happened they were in a state of shock that someone had actually defeated the monster that had terrorized them for years. The man was then given the name of Rakudo Senen the Sage of Six Paths, the man then went to tell them how he had gained power and began to teach them all his way to survive in this new world. Sadly, technology was unable to be saved and they destroyed anything from computers to pokeballs and anything that was made with technology opting to begin anew. Years passed and civilization rose to its former glory, although there was no technology, no one missed it. People were actually happy. Another thing that rose was the beginning of the ninja era as many people now used the energy that the Rakudo Senen taught them, chakra. However what no one knew was that the Senen was getting old and as he aged the seal that held the Jubi was getting weaker. The night soon came, he was on his deathbed, around him stood his two sons, one had inherited his chakra while the other had his eyes, and he told the two what to do and to lead the people into a new era. The time soon arrived as he was on his last strings the Rakudo Senen used the last of his power to do the impossible he took the Jubi's power and split it into nine parts that he scattered around the world. After doing that he then sealed the body into a rock that he hurled into the sky creating the moon. Smiling from the thought of keeping the world safe, the Senen fell to the ground dead. After the world found out about the death of their savior they were saddened but they would not let his memory fade, many wrote about his deeds, and the legacy of the Rakudo Senen lived on, until the two sons fought against each other, during their battles many priceless scrolls were lost and never to be seen again. Eons later, eons passed and many things changed, shinobi clans were formed, wars broke out between them bringing chaos to the lands. People died, but the fighting didn't stop so many turned to look for new weapons to use and they found them in the form of tailed beasts that contained massive power, the very same creatures that the Rakudo Senen had created. Using seals, they tried to control the beast, but nothing worked on them. Then two men appeared, one was a member of the Uchiha clan and the other was a man from the Senju. They had powers to subdue the beast and control them to a certain degree. The two would constantly fight for power and dominance, with the power of the beast, feeling the land to be threatened by these countless bloodshed a new clan rose to stop the fighting, the Uzumaki clan. Using their powerful sealing skills they sealed away the beast into anything that would hold them, from a tea kettle to a large pot. Except for one, the strongest of them all was the Kayubi no Yoko. 
Its power was so great that it could not be sealed away like the others. Instead it was sealed inside an Uzumaki woman by the name of Mito Uzumaki who later married the head of the Senju clan Hiroshima Senju the first Jinchuriki of the Kayubi. The beast has since been passed to another host after keeping the beast at bay for years but things aren't meant to last forever accidents happen all the time. Years later. A seven-year Naruto Namikaze sat on top of the Hokage monument staring down at the village that he calls his home however it sure didn't feel like home. Seven years ago, on the day he and his sister were born, the Kayubi no Yoko had attacked their village forcing his father Minato Namikaze to seal the beast away. Using a powerful seal, he sealed the beast into Naomi, his twin sister. At first, life was good but when they reached the age of four their parents decided to start training them. He had never been so excited in his life. But everything went downhill after that day. Minato had forced open Naomi's chakra and were astounded by the amount. As for him that was the day his parents began to forget about him. Why? Simple he did not have a single ounce of chakra in all of his body. That's right Naruto had no chakra whatsoever so his parents took Naomi under their wing and left him to fend for himself. They would say what kind of shinobi will you become if you can't use chakra, instead of bringing honor to the clan you will bring nothing but shame. So Naomi trained with her parents while Naruto would just stand near the house just watching them. Minato and Kashina didn't bother to teach him taijutsu or kenjutsu, two skills that would help him become a ninja, but when he asked his parents just said that Naomi needed the training. So he just began to distant himself away from his family and about a year ago he was forgotten by them. After spending about an hour on top of the Hokage monument, he stood up and began to walk away heading home. He knew that Naomi's training would be done by now. Walking through the streets, he could see people talking happily, no one even spared him a glance. It was always like this, sometimes he even thought that it would have been better if he wasn't born at all, running away also came to mind, actually now that he thought about it, and maybe leaving the village wouldn't be too bad. Who would miss him, no one. He had no friends to hang out with and to his family he didn't exist anymore, so maybe he should leave. Naruto soon arrived at the Namikaze compound, he noticed that no one was outside so his suspicion of Naomi's training being done was right. Shaking his head he walked up to the front door and entered the house, as soon as he finished taking off his shoes he heard laughter comium. Walking in the direction he came to the side of his parents and sister, sitting on the couch along with them was the head of the Hyuga clan. Hiyashi and his family, also with them was the head of the Yamanaka clan, Inoichi and his family. Naomi was talking about her training with her two best friends Hinata and Ino, seeing that no one took notice of him he just kept on walking to his room, had he glanced again he would have the blonde Yamanaka girl look at him. Once safe inside of his room Naruto went straight to bed knowing that he would be forgotten once again and that he would most likely have to go eat once everyone went to bed. As he laid there he didn't notice how tired he actually was and for some reason fell asleep. The next morning when the blonde woke up he felt strange for some reason, he was still pretty tired even though he never actually trained. Getting out of his bed he dressed himself in a pair of blue shorts, a white short sleeve t-shirt, and out on a pair of sandals. Leaving the comfort zone of his room Naruto headed downstairs only to find no one, shrugging he went into the kitchen and prepared his breakfast. After eating he went back to his room where he pulled a book from under his bed and began reading. Hours passed and still no one arrived. When lunchtime came he went downstairs to fix something to eat when he passed the calendar that hung on the wall. He clenched his hands into fist when he saw the note on it, it said vacation weekend, and they had gone on vacation again leaving him behind without a care in the world. That was it, he screamed in his mind. No more, he was sick and tired of being ignored, if they didn't care about him then so be it. The only thing he could think about now was what it would have been like had he been a single child. Would he have the Kayubi inside of him? Would his parent teach him? All those questions went through his mind. He could only blame one thing that made his life a living hell. The Kayubi and its container. The Kayubi whore. Turning abruptly he walked back upstairs and went to his room. The first thing he did was go to his closet where he pulled out a green backpack. Throwing it on his bed he opened it. The next thing he did was go to his dresser where he began to pull out sets of clothes and throw them in the green backpack. The next thing he went over to the far corner of his room and removed the loose wood tile and pulled out a small shoebox that he stole from Naomi, inside of it he had some money that he managed to make by helping out the elderly. Naruto tossed the money into the bag and threw the box on the floor he didn't even replace the loose tile he left it like that. 
Now that he had everything ready he put the bag under his bed and began to plan when he would leave the village. He knew that he would have a while before anyone even found out that he was gone. Hell those bastards might not even find out at all. The weekend passed and Monday soon arrived. Naruto was pulling the last of the touches in his escape plan, tonight was the night. The blonde walked out of his room and headed downstairs as soon as he got to the living room he realized that his parents had returned. However they didn't even acknowledge him instead they were looking at a pack of what seemed to be photographs, probably from their trip. He watched as they held his sister close to them showing her so much affection, something that he yearned for but would never receive. Without saying a thing he walked out of the house, left the compound and headed straight for the forest, people back away when they felt the killing intent that he was exuding. Those bastards they care for nothing but her, it's always her, when was the last time I was held like that? I guess that I should leave and never come back, Naruto thought as he walked through the woods. He was about to turn around and return to the village to finish his preparation to leave, when he suddenly slipped on something and went tumbling down the side of a small hill. Naruto rolled down the hill and hit a tree the impact caused him to black out, by the time the blonde came to it was already dark. Gritting his teeth from the pain on his back he stood up and used the tree he had hit when he rolled down the hill as a support. Putting his hand on his injured area he began to walk in the direction he thought the village was in, however since it was dark he couldn't see the direction he was heading in. After what seemed to be hours Naruto came to a stop next to a bush that hit a blue berry on it, his stomach growled, without a second thought he grabbed the berry and ate it. As soon as he finished eating it the pain on his back diminished to the point that it was only a little sore he didn't know how a simple berry healed him. Smiling he looked around to see if there were more, but his search was cut short when he stepped in spot that felt soft. His eyes went to the ground just in time to see the ground below him give away, the nest thing he knew he was falling. Naruto let out a loud scream as he fell, he was scared, he had never felt such fear before, the only thing he could do was close his eyes and pray to whatever deity could hear him to help him. He felt his body hit something wet, he opened his eyes to see that he had landed in some sort of underwater pond, it wasn't deep enough that it would prevent him from swimming to the bank. Naruto stood on the bank of the lake taking in his surroundings, for being some sort of underground cavern it was well lit. Most of the light seemed to be coming from deeper in the cavern. Shrugging Naruto began to follow the path that led deeper to see what he would find, so far there wasn't much just a bunch of crystals that seemed to be the light source for the cave, he could see an even brighter light approach. Raising his hands to shield his eyes from the blinding light as he exited the cave he was following. When the light seemed to die down the blonde removed his hands from his face only for his jaw to hit the ground at what he saw. He was standing inside the biggest underground cave he had ever seen. There were trees all over the place each full of different kind of berries. There was also a stream flowing through the middle of the place with a bridge to help cross it. At the far end he could see steps lots of steps leading up to some sort of platform, for once in his life he felt at peace as if his life had never had any hardships this place was peaceful as if man hadn't touched anything in here for a long time. Wanting to see more Naruto began to walk around, the first thing he did was find more of those blue berries that had made his pain go away, once he had those, he crossed the bridge to go to the other side of the stream. His goal at the moment was to go to the top of the platform and see what lay at the top or at the other side in case there was more to this place. Once at the foot of the steps he took a deep breath and began walking up, it was tiring for his seven-year-old body as he wasn't accustomed to doing such things. When he reached the top Naruto's eyes widened at the thing that stood before him, it was the statue of some sort of dog. It was white with a black underbelly, golden hooves, a gold jewel-like thing on its forehead a large ring around its midsection with four green gems. All in all it was the most fascinating thing he had ever laid his eyes upon. As he looked at it more closely he spotted something at the foot of the statue, a small altar, on it laid five dull grey colored rectangular plates of some sort. It was then that his curiosity got the best of him as he walked to the altar and gazed upon the plates more closely. Wanting to feel the texture of the plates the seven-year-old used his right hand to reach up to stroke them, but, as soon as his fingers made contact with one all five began to glow brightly. A burning light shot out the plates and hit Naruto in the chest sending him to the ground, quickly the blonde lost conscious. Naruto's mindscape, Naruto groggily opened his eyes as he felt a sharp jolt of pain in his brain. Rubbing his head the set up only to find himself in a strange place. 
It was some kind of large temple several large pillars were on each side, clouds could be seen in the far end. Naruto was awed at the sight, and then he spotted a staircase that led upwards, hoping to see some more amazing sights, the boy walked over to the foot of the stairs and made his way up. The more he walked the cooler everything seemed to him, soon he arrived at a large platform where he spotted large pillars like the ones he had seen in the lower area. Then at the far end was a large wall with a white gem in the middle surrounded by five dull gray plates he had seen earlier and eleven empty slots with the same size of the plates. At this point he was confused, what were those plates doing here, more importantly where the hell was he at? Welcome young one, a voice suddenly spoke up. Naruto looked around trying to find the source of the voice, who's there? A white orb of light appeared in front of Naruto making him jump back, the orb soon started to expand and grow bigger. With a flash, Naruto was facing the same creature he had seen in the cave. My name is Arceus, the creature spoke. What are you? Are you some kind of summon beast or something? Naruto asked trying to not show that he was frightened. And where am I? I am no summon as you call them. I am an ancient creature that once roamed the earth as you do now. I was called a Pokemon. Creatures that were born before the Rakudo Senin, Arceus said, as to where we are we are in your mind. My mind looks like some sort of temple, and you said creatures as in more than one, are there more of you? Naruto said. At one point yes, but now no more, you see a group of people sought to conquer the world and they used my children to do their evil doings, I along with the help of others used our powers to seal the powers and abilities of the other Pokemon in the plates that you see on the wall, Arceus said. Although it would seem that throughout time the plates separated, you have absorbed five of them, there are still eleven remaining. You mean that those plates have some sort of special power? The blonde asked. Yes, each plates hold the power of the sixteen different types of Pokemon that existed, the white orb in the middle hold the powers of what we called, normal, abilities that are not affiliated with any element, the Pokemon explained. So what you're trying to say is that everyone one of those plates has the knowledge of each Pokemon attack and ability, Naruto said. Yes, in each plate the attacks of every Pokemon are sealed inside, as you grow more attacks will become available, Arceus said. As I grow? The blonde asked slightly confused at what he'd been told. Yes, I have chosen you to continue my legacy as the new master of the plates, the giant Pokemon informed the blonde. Me? Naruto said, why? When you first touch the plates I read your mind, and to say the least I was stunned, I have seen humans behave as such, throwing one child aside in favor of another, the Pokemon said. I don't have much time left, just know that when you wake up knowledge of some Pokemon attacks will be in your mind, train hard and you will get stronger, the stronger you get the more attacks that you will learn, each time you unlock a new attack knowledge of how to use will automatically be revealed. But, won't the attacks require chakra? Naruto asked. No, the attacks required no chakra, they are the power that came before the birth chakra, these attacks put jutsus to shame and the attacks are so strong that jutsus could only do so much as to slow them down, Arceus chuckled, but, let me warn you, the plates will not trust you with their power you must earn it, however I will do this for you I will unlock the five that you have at the moment. Arceus walked over to the wall that held the plates, the plates began to glow, and soon they began to turn into their color. The plates colors were red, green, sky blue, yellow, and ocean blue. Naruto's eyes widened as information about attacks was suddenly engraved in his mind. The Pokemon god just looked at the blonde as the information on the attacks entered his mind. What was that? Naruto asked. That was the knowledge of the plates. Now let me explain what each of these plates are called. The red one is the flame plate, the green one is the meadow plate, the yellow one is the zap plate, the dark blue one is the splash plate, the light blue one is the sky plate. Each of the plates represent an element like I told you. Here we have the elements of fire, grass, water, electric, and flying. Arceus said, now if you wish to become stronger then you must locate the rest of them. The ones that remain to be found are the ones that represent, ground, rock, dark, bug, ghost, poison, ice, fighting, psychic, steel, and dragon. I will, and thank you, Naruto said. One last thing. Make sure you take some of the berries in the field, they will help you, not only do they feed your hunger, each has a special effect, from healing to curing paralysis, poison, and burns, Arceus said. There should also be a bag somewhere in there. I will and thanks again, the boy said. Good luck boy, you're going to need it, 
Arceus thought as he watched the blonde disappear. Real world. Naruto opened his eyes and jumped straight to his feet only to fall back on his ass as a massive amount of information was sent through his brain. After five minutes passed he felt the pain recede this allowed him to stand up normally, at once he could feel that his body felt different. He also began to wonder if what Arceus told him was true and if it hadn't really been a dream. Wanting to know if it was real or not he tried to draw the power of the plates, he pointed his hand out to see if anything happened and concentrated on an attack that was called Thunder Shock. Nothing happened at first just as he was about to pass all this as a dream his hand began to spark yellow then a small bolt of lightning shot out, leaving a stupefied blonde staring at the rock that was hit, a smirk plastered on his face. By the time Naruto returned to the village the sun had risen up, on his hip he had a sort of belt with different size pouches. Each of the pouches had an assortment of berries that he had picked from the field in that underground cave. Walking he could see people getting their shops ready for the day. Although that didn't even matter to him, he needed to get home. When he got to the house he saw that his parents and his sister were already training. She a moment was wearing what seemed to be a white GI and purple shorts. Shaking his head he headed inside the house and went up to his room, he was damn sure that they hadn't noticed his absence. However he didn't see that someone had noticed his arrival. His sister, Naomi had stopped from her exercises and saw him looking at them. She didn't say anything she just gazed back at her parents with a sad look on her face. Naruto had finally reached his room and the first thing he did was grab his backpack from its hiding place. Tonight was the night. He would leave to get stronger and to do that he would have to collect the remaining 11 plates. Once he was done with the last of his packing, Naruto left his room. The one thing he needed to do now was go to the closest training ground to get used to his new powers. When he left the house he never saw that his parents were just finishing Naomi's training. Kashina who had turned to head back to the house saw Naruto run out of the house and wondered what was with him. Minato saw her glancing at the compound gates just as his son left. One thing went through his head. He didn't bother them this morning for some training. A smile came to his face. He was finally realizing that he could never be a shinobi. Naruto arrived at the training ground scanning to make sure that there was no one nearby to see him train. Taking a deep he concentrated in calling forth the zap plate's power. It took a few seconds, but his right hand began to spark with small yellow bolts of electricity. The blonde looked to see if there was this attack on, only one thing was near and that was a small blue bird perched on a tree branch above him. Pointing his hand towards the bird, he released a small wave of lightning that hit the bird sending it to the ground. The bird was trying to get back up, but small jolts of electricity would surge around its body. Huh? I guess that wasn't Thundershock, Naruto said as he closed his eyes to try and find out what the attack was. Going into the memories of the zap plate he found what he was looking for. So it was a thunder wave, a status type attack that will paralyze my opponent for a set amount of time. Naruto smiled now he knew two attacks that were locked in the zap plate all he now had to do was find out how to call forth the right one. Calling forth the power of the plate again, his hand once again began to spark. This time he pointed at the tree and released the blast of electricity, again it was a thunder wave. Naruto thought that maybe he was doing this wrong, how he wished Arceus had told him how to use the attacks. Sighing he tried again and again it was the same attack, by the time tenth time Naruto was getting frustrated. Thundershock damn it, Naruto shouted pointing two fingers at the tree. This time a yellow ball formed in his fingers and fired a bolt of yellow lightning. It was at this time that the bird he hit earlier with the thunder wave recovered and flew. The bird flew right in the path of the attack. The thundershock struck the bird in the wing. It engulfed the bird forcing it to chirp out in pain before exploding in a shower of feathers and blood. Oops, Naruto said. That had not been what he wanted, sure he hit the bird earlier, but it was basically a non-lethal attack. Now he wondered what it would do to a larger target like a deer or more importantly a human. After the small bird incident Naruto began to work on his control. He pointed his hand out and the small of electricity left it, when he pointed two fingers put together he fired the small lightning bolt. Even after he thought that he had them down Naruto kept on practicing because like everyone says practice makes perfection. It was an hour after he began his practice that he found out what the ability of the zap plate was and to tell the truth it wasn't pretty. When he went to fire another thundershock, this time at the river that was next to the field, his body suddenly began to glow yellow. That was when he saw that his attack turned back around and came right at him. 
The thundershock hit his chest sending him to the ground. The only movement he did was the occasional leg twitch. Naruto knew one thing, and that was that he was paralyzed for the time being. Now he knew how that bird felt when he hit it with his thunder wave. Luckily for him he had the remedy to his problem if he could reach it. He let his eyes wander around, only to let out a groan as he saw that his belt was over 10 feet away. Now he wondered why the hell he took it off, he was unable to reach it so his berries were useless at the moment. So the only thing he had left to do was waiting for the status effect to pass. As he waited a wave of information hit his brain, it seemed that the ability he unlocked from the plate was known as lightning rod and it drew all lightning based attacks to him. He cursed such a useless ability, how was that going to help him in the long run? Another amount of information him then, there was another ability that went in conjunction with it, but it was still locked away. Are you alright? He heard someone ask. Naruto looked up from his place on the ground to see a young girl around his age maybe a year older staring at him. She had brown hair tied in two buns and deep chocolate brown eyes. She wore a white Chinese blouse and brown pants. Overall she looked like a cute panda. Yeah, Naruto responded, just looking at the clouds. The girl looked up to the sky as sweat dropped, there wasn't a single cloud in the sky at the moment. Really now, I don't see a single cloud floating by, the girl answered back. EHH, they already passed, Naruto said. Sure whatever, there hasn't been a single cloud all morning long, the brunette said to him. Damn, come on think Naruto, wait that's it, the blonde thought as he said, I guess I just got lost on the road to life then. The girl face faulted at the strange answer she got out the blonde. What kind of response is that? Okay, the why don't you just get up? She asked. It's too damn troublesome to do so. Naruto said hoping to get her off his case. The girl frowned, this boy was hiding something under his body if he didn't want to get up, but what could it be? I see, then you won't mind if I help you then? She asked as she reached to grab him. Naruto began to sweat as he saw the girl's hand get closer to his body. And as if Kami or Arceus would hate him as soon as her hand made contact with his hand, his body decided to spark. The girl was taken by surprise that she had not time to take her hand back and ended up getting shocked. Naruto stared at the girl as she fell on her butt from the small shock. He knew it wasn't strong to paralyze her. All he was trying to do now was not to laugh at her. The girl rubbed her head as she glared at the blonde, but opted a confused look on her face instead it seemed like he was trying to not laugh for some reason. He eyes followed the place he was looking at and saw that he was looking at her hair. Using her hand she reached up to touch it when she felt her buns were gone, her hair seemed spiky. She stood up from her place and ran to the river and looked at her reflection. What she saw made her have only one reaction, she screamed. By now Naruto couldn't help it, he burst out laughing, and he laughed so hard that it was painful especially in his state. The girl's hair was spiked up and was also glittering from the small shock he gave her. She on the other hand turned around slowly and glared at him. Out of nowhere she pulled out a small black knife, a kanai to be exact. It was only when Naruto saw the kanai in her hand that his laughing stopped and he struggled to move. His eyes were wide when he was her right next to him. Hey, come on now I didn't mean it, Naruto said nervously. Yeah right, the girl said back to him, you did it on purpose to scare me away to keep this training ground to yourself. No, wait I can explain, pleaded the blonde. Then start talking then, came the answer. I'm paralyzed, he responded, the girl lowered her kanai for a second then raised it back up. Sure, whatever, she said. I can show you, Naruto kept on pleading as he was completely defenseless at the moment. Fine, show me, she agreed without lowering her knife. Okay, first do you see that belt with the pouches at least 10 feet away? Naruto asked, the girl nodded as she indeed see the strange belt, then go over to it, open the pouch with the number one. Inside it are some small red berries grab one and feed it to me. You want me to feed you lazy bastard, the girl yelled. It's not what you think, I told you I'm paralyzed and the berry will cure me, then I will be able to show you how I got paralyzed, the blue eye boy said. Fine, she growled out as she stomped towards the belt. Once there she opened the one label one, inside were berries like the boy said, they were small red ones. She grabbed one and looked at it curiously, she had never seen anything like it but she shrugged and took it to the boy, she tossed it into his mouth. With the berry on his mouth Naruto began to chew it, 
he could feel the juice from it removing the thundershock's effect. Once he swallowed it, the paralysis was gone. Naruto jumped to his feet, the girl stared at him, and he had been telling the truth about the berries, they did heal him. The blonde then pointed his hand at her making her put her finger on her lower lip in curiosity making her look even cuter, this made Naruto's cheeks turn a light pink in color. Thunder wave, Naruto said as the small wave of lightning erupted from his hand. The girl had no time to react as she was hit hard making her fall once again. Shush her body wouldn't respond. What the hell did you do to me? I can't move, the brown head said. I told you I was going to show you, Naruto said although he was hit by a thundershock instead of the thunder wave, which was more painful. He went over to his belt and pulled out a sherry berry out. The blonde then came over to where the girl laid and popped the berry into her mouth. She growled before beginning to chew it. Once she had swallowed she felt movement to her limbs return. Okay, I have to wonder how you hit yourself with something like that, she said as she stood up. I didn't mean to, my special ability draws in all lighting based attacks when activated, Naruto explained. Good thing I learned to will it off or else both of us would be on the ground unable to move. That's good, the girl said, I never introduced myself did I? Well my name is Tenten, what's yours? Naruto, the blonde responded. So what were you doing out here? Tenten asked. Training, Naruto said. Really, I came here to do the same thing although I use weapons primarily, the girl told him with a smile. That's cool. I have been meaning to ask, what's with the bloody feathers? Tenten asked. Naruto looked at the place where the remains of the bird laid and sweat dropped, you don't want to know. Tenten let the subject drop, instead she just watched as he went over to the belt and picked it up. Once he had it on he walked back to her. The two started to talk to each other about what they wanted to do when they were older. Tenten told him about how she wanted to follow in the footsteps of her idol, Tsunade. Naruto clenched his fist at the name, which went unnoticed by Tenten. Naruto told her how he wanted to grow up and be a strong shinobi. The two enjoyed the day together. Naruto showed her what else he knew to do at the moment. Tenten volunteered to help him out a little with her limited weapons training. Thankfully he had those Oran berries because he got hit by quite a few Senbons. At the end Naruto had managed to learn how access his quick attack, which surprised the girl. When the two were done Naruto wiped some of the sweat off turned to look at the brunette. Well Tenten it was nice meeting you, Naruto said as he walked away. Huh? You're leaving already? Tenten asked. Yep, Naruto said, we'll see you later then Tenten-chan. Okay, see you tomorrow Naruto-kun called out the girl. Naruto turned and gave her a smile before walking away. I'm sorry Tenten Chan, Naruto thought sadly. Later that night Naruto sneaked into his parents' armory where they kept all of their weapons. Once he was inside, he began to look around for something that would be useful for his journey. There were so many different items that he had no idea where to start. Their kanais, shurikens, senbon, wire, swords, and many other things. Naruto looked on the desk at the far end of the room and saw a small stack of paper bombs, but not like the ones that were sold at the shops. These were of the highest quality since they were made by a true seal's master. Smiling he took the stack placing them into his backpack. Now he had to find more things. He went to the shelf and began to grab a few kanais, shurikens, wire rolls, and a single tanto. Just as he was about to leave he saw a box on the bottom shelf covered in dust. Going for it he opened it. Inside was a set of ten beautiful knives. These had a cream-colored grip the blades were black and silver with the length of seven inches. This brought a smile to his face as he covered the box back up then moved it to his backpack. Now he had everything. Naruto quickly got out and locked the door before he began walking down the path to the house's gate. He took one last look at the house before he left. It was around midnight already and there were hardly any people out so he had no trouble while heading out. But when he saw the gates he stopped, there was one last thing he had to do before he left. Naruto walked back to the training ground where he had spent the day with the first friend he had ever made in his seven years of life. Reaching into his bag, he pulled out the stack of paper bombs and laid them at the root of the tree along with a letter for Tenten. This was it, now everything was done. Naruto turned his back and began to walk away, no one saw him as he disappeared into the woods. After walking for about half an hour Naruto arrived at a cave entrance, the same one he had used that morning to leave the underground cave. At the moment he needed to get in and out as fast as he could. 
The reason as to why he came he used most of his healing berries that day. The blonde walked through the cave and soon came to the place where the secret entrance to the underground cave was. Going down, he walked for about another hour before he came to the large field of berry trees. Naruto used his quick attack to move faster to the trees. Using the speed attack he managed to refill his pouches with new berries. Now all he had left to do was sleep and leave early in the morning. As soon as he had a bed made he lies down and fell asleep. By the time he woke up Naruto picked up all of his belongings and made his way out of the cave. It took him only 45 minutes to exit the cave as he could see better where he was going. When he got out he saw the sun had risen over the horizon. It was over at last he would no longer be the odd one out, now longer would he have to suffer at the hands of his parents. The only thing he was sorry about was meeting Tenten just as he was going to leave, but he had made up his mind and there was no turning back. Naruto looked back in the direction of the village and walked away in the other direction without sparing the village a second glance. In Konoha Tenten woke up bright and early, today she was going to go back to the training ground and hope that Naruto would show up. Sure they got off to a rocky start but in the end they managed to get along. And those cool abilities of his made it even more fun to train with. When she had gotten home the day before she told her mother about him and she was happy that she had made a friend. She quickly got dressed and left her room running downstairs where her mother was just finishing making their breakfast. You're up quite early today Ten Chan, her mother said, could it be because you want to meet with a special someone? Okaa-san, Tenten said with a blush on her face, I'm still too young to be thinking about those things. Era Era, you were quite happy when you were telling me about him yesterday, Tenten's mother said and here I thought that I would have a son-in-law soon. Ah, I just want him to help me with my training, the brunette said with anime tears. After eating her breakfast, the eight-year-old girl ran as fast as she could to the training ground. When she arrived there, she saw that no one was there yet so she pulled out a few kanais from her pouch to get some warm-up exercises. As Tenten was about to throw the first one she saw something on the foot of the tree where she first saw Naruto. Walking over to the tree, the brunette saw a small stack of paper bombs. Along with them was a letter. The odd thing was that it was addressed to her. Tenton picked up the letter and tore the seal off and read. Tenton if you're reading this, then I have already left the village. I'm sorry, I was happy to have made a friend and will always cherish our friendship even if it was only for a single day. I know that you like weapons so I left you a small stack of paper bombs that were made by none other than the Hokage himself. Again I'm sorry and goodbye. Naruto Namikaze Tenten read the letter again and again. She couldn't believe that the one friend she manages to make and not think of her as weird left the village on the same day she meet him. Another thing was that her friend had been none other than the son on the Yandaimi. Something clicked in her mind then, she had seen he before now that she actually thought about it. It had been that day that the Namikaze family walked through the village, but that day she had only seen the H daughter. Then she saw him the little boy walking about 20 feet behind them with a sad expression on his face. How could she not have seen it before, he was unhappy with his family. She had to know more now, and the only person she could talk to was her mother. Picking up the bombs she ran home. Naruto the blonde was just entering the first town that he came across. It wasn't that big, but there was no one that would recognize him. Now he had to leave fast if he wanted to get to Tanzaku Gai by that afternoon. So he made his way through the village trying to not draw attention to himself. But like he said Kami hates him when a group of six kids who seemed to be twice his age surrounded him. Well, look at what we have here boys, the taller one of the group who looked to be actually two years older than the rest said, a little boy who seems to have some things of value on him. The other boys laughed, but Naruto didn't find it funny. Please move aside, I do not want any trouble, he said. Hear that he doesn't want any trouble, the same boy said, too bad for you because we aren't letting you leave with that backpack or belt, we could get a good price for them. Move, Naruto repeated as he looked around and saw that some of the adults were just staring with grins on their faces. Now he knew why not many people came here, this town was made up of mostly gangs. Now why don't we show you what we do with little boys like you, Naruto was told by the tall boy as he pulled out a knife. Naruto sighed he knew that this was bound to happen. So using his quick attack he moved back shocking those around him. The next thing he did was draw upon the sky plate like he had been practicing since he left the cave. Gust. Naruto shouted as a large cyclone formed heading straight for the boys. The boys seeing this moved out of the way except for four who had caught in the attack sending them into the wall of the houses. 
All four were instantly knocked out. The leader glanced at Naruto and was terrified. How someone so young could be able to strong? Could he be a shinobi? Whatever he was he didn't care he rid himself of his fear and ran at Naruto. Naruto raised two finger put together and drew the power of the zap plate, Thundershock. A bolt of lightning shot out a small yellow ball that was formed on his fingertips. The kid took the full blast of the attack sending flying back with a large scorch mark on his chest. I did tell you to move, Naruto said as he glanced at the single boy that was still standing. Don't hurt me, I was only following Derek, he said. Just get out of here, the blonde said. The boy nodded and left running. Naruto could see the people around him moving away some had murderous looks on their faces. He had to get out of here now or else he would come out really hurt. Shrugging he kept on walking. Some of the older men nodded to others and slowly followed the blonde out of the village. Unknown to them up on the rooftop of a small building another person had witnessed the fight and now he had a smirk on his face. He turned to his smaller companion whose eyes were still following the boy. Come, he said moving from his spot to follow the brat. Naruto was well aware that he was being followed and that worried him. Sure he could handle a few kids older than him but that was because they understate mated him. He knew that he would have to face them soon or he would be in trouble. The blonde began to gather the power of the flame plate he had done it only once and that was unconsciously and was hoping that his training with the zap plate would help him. He could feel the burning sensation of the plate's power in his stomach. The men who were following Naruto were getting ready to capture him. This boy could fetch them a nice price in the black market or if they sold him to a hidden village like Kumogakure. Just as the leader was going to signal the attack, Naruto turned around and released a cloud of red embers. The fire attack hit too, but the other two were far back to prevent the attack from hitting them. Shit, what is this kid? He can use both lightning and fire jutsus, the one who dodged the attack said. I'm sure that Kumo would pay a hefty price for him, his partner said as he watched the other two roll on the ground holding their faces in pain. Naruto was about to call on the power of the zap plate again but he felt something grab his legs. His eyes darted to the ground to see one of the men he had taken down with the ember earlier. His face was burned with at least second degree burns. It was this small distraction that cost him as a fist hit him across the face making him kiss the dirt. The blonde turned to see the other two smirking victoriously, gritting his teeth in anger. He began to draw upon the power of the plates. The two men backed away when they saw that his hair began to glow as if it was drawing energy. Naruto stood up from his place, his hair glowing brightly. The two men who had been burned had stood up as well, all four of them were afraid. With the blonde's hair glow intensified, he pointed both palms towards them and with a scream a large golden and white beam shot out. The four were engulfed in the powerful beam of light that blasted them away. When the attack died down Naruto saw them all lying on the ground trees had fallen around them and on them. Naruto backed away his eyes wide in shock, he had killed them, but he hadn't meant to kill them, and what was that weird feeling he got. Damn Gaki you sure went overboard didn't you, a voice from behind him said. The blonde turned his head and back away. Behind him stood a tall man, he had pale skin, short spiky black hair, and brown eyes. He wore a grey flak jacket. The bottom portion of his face was wrapped in white bandages, and black cargo pants. On his back he had a giant butcher-like sword. Who are you? Naruto asked. Name's Zabuza Momochi, the man responded. What do you want? The blonde asked he was scared this guy had an aura of death. What were those powers of yours? I know they weren't any sort of ninjutsu as I felt no chakra coming from them. Not only that but I can't feel a single ounce of chakra coming off you, Zabuza said. Their special powers that I got, was the answer the swordsman received. How? Zabuza was anxious to find out how the Gaki got those powers. They didn't seem to need any chakra and that could come in handy against the Mizukage. Naruto was in a conflict. How was he going to explain this? He couldn't lie to this man as he could kill him in the blink of an eye. I got them from a set of special plates, Naruto answered. Plates, Zabuza repeated. Yeah they were this dull grey color then they turned into different colors giving me powers, the blonde continued. Hold a second, plates, you mean like this, the man said as he reached into his ninja pouch and pulled out two dull grey colored plates. Naruto's eyes widened at the sight of two of the missing eleven plates. How had he found them when he had no idea how to find them? Where did you find them? Naruto asked. 
in the land of water, deep within a cave that I used to hide once, came the response. Now tell me more about them. He thought about it for a moment. Maybe if he told him about the plates he could get those two from him. Fine, but let's go somewhere else, Naruto said. Follow me we'll go meet up with my associate, Zabuza says as he began to walk away. Naruto went right behind him. Yoshida Suzuki couldn't believe what he had just seen and learned from the little time he had spent at the bar in Tori no Kuni. He had stopped there for a quick drink after completing his mission of transporting a scroll to the local daimyo for a hopeful trade agreement. He had been told that he the daimyo would personally be going to Konohagakure to talk to the Yandaimi Hokage. After that he decided to stop at the local bar to get himself a drink before heading back not knowing what awaited him inside. As soon as he stepped into the bar he went and ordered a drink. However as he drank something caught his attention from the corner of his eye. Something that out his drink, there sitting in the far corner of the bar with a plate of dango in front of him sat the one person that the village had been searching for. Spiky blonde hair and piercing blue eyes, he knew that he had just found the missing son of the Yandaimi. Then he noticed something or rather someone, the person who the blonde was sharing a table with stood up and went to the bartender. Yoshida started to panic as he saw one of the most notorious criminals of Kirigakure, Momochi Zabuza, a former member of the Seven Swordmen of the Mist. After watching the rogue swordsman go back to his seat, Yoshida downed the rest of his drink and dropped a few coins on the counter. He then left the bar as fast as he could trying not to draw attention to himself. He knew that he had to get away as fast as possible and report to his Hokage. As soon as he was out of the village he quickly took to the trees and began running towards the leaf village. However today luck was not on his side, just minutes after having been running he heard the distinct sound of rustling leaves. Stopping for a moment he began looking around, someone was following him, he knew as much. But as he waited and listened no one appeared and no more sounds could be heard. Just as he was about keep going he felt something wrapped around his ankle. Looking down Yoshida saw two green vine things around his ankle. Suddenly he felt the vines get pulled. To his shock the pull was strong enough that he was pulled hard right through the trees. Screaming as he was pulled through the foliage the leaf ninja was then lifted high into the air before he was brought back down slamming into the ground, hard. Coughing he tried to get back up but the pain his body was in at the moment made it unbearable to even move. Well, well look at what we have here, said a male voice coming from the trees. Yoshida felt the vines leave his ankle as watched them go into the trees just as the silhouette form of a person began to appear. As the person got closer he saw the vines going into the man's sleeves. Using as much strength as he could the ninja managed to sit up as he finally saw who had been following him. His eyes widened when he saw the familiar blind hair and blue eyes of the boy he had seen at the bar. Namikaze Naruto, Yoshida said as he held his aching shoulder. Don't call me by that filthy name, the blonde said, I am no longer the son of that bastard. Don't you insult our Hokage, said the leaf ninja. He's been looking for you these past eight years. Yoshida suddenly stopped talking as he felt a horrible pain in his chest, looking down he saw a blade going through. His eyes then went up and saw the cold blue eyes of the blonde Namikaze. Blood began coming from his mouth as he saw the blade get pulled out. Yoshida fell forward onto the cold ground as blood began to pool around him the last thing he saw was the arrival of two other people. Looks like you were right, Naruto said. Naruto-kun said the female of their group. Don't worry about Hiku-chan, let's us just get out of here, Naruto said, we need to get to Nami no Kuni to meet our client. With that the group walked away leaving the body of the leaf ninja to the wild animals. Konohagakure Namikaze Minato sat behind his desk going through some paperwork, he was getting worried about one of his chunin that had gone on a mission to Tori no Kuni. It had been two weeks since he had left and he had heard anything from him. Not only that, but also the daimyo of Tori had just left two days ago after coming to finalize the trade agreement. That had made him send a group of his tracker ninjas to see what they could find out and they were due at any moment. Sighing he also had another issue at hand just a couple of hours ago, he had received a request for backup from his last student. Apparently their client had lied about the mission he was requesting and now it had been upgraded to a B rank mission with the possibility of going to A so he had no choice but to call in the only available team he had at the moment and they were due at any moment now. Hearing a knock on his door he looked up from his work as he saw the team he was waiting for. Walking into the office was none other than his wife Uzumaki Kashina and his beloved daughter. Over the past 8 years Naomi had truly grown into a beautiful young woman. 
Her hair had gone longer than it tied in a single ponytail. Her outfit consisted of a long black scarf with red butterflies across it, topped off with black gloves. She wears a dark red hakama with a miniskirt. Her legs are complemented by her black leggings. Her also on her right leg she has a kanai pouch. However her weapon of choice was something that neither he nor Kashina ever thought of, a naganata. Well Minato-kun what did you call us for? asked Kashina. I just got a request for backup and I'm sending the two of you, Minato responded. Who are we backing up to San? his daughter asked. Team 7, the blonde Hokage said. Apparently the client did not give all the information about the mission and it turned into B-rank mission as soon as they faced the demon brothers of Kirigakir. If the client lied, why did Kakashi continue on with the mission, he should have turned back, Kashina said. As it turns out his team said that they wanted to continue the mission and since all three agree he decided to keep going with the condition to ask for backup, he answered. Tisk, it was probably Sasuke's idea to continue. I swear that ass is gonna get his team killed one day, Naomi said. Be as it is, I need you to go and back them up, this mission has the potential to increase to an A rank, said Minato sighing knowing the hatred his daughter had for the Uchiha. Fine we'll go and save his sorry ass, Naomi grumbled. Also, Minato have gotten any more leads? asked Kashina quietly. Naomi looked at her mother then at her father who had a sad smile on his face as he shook his head letting them know that he hadn't. I see, the redhead mumbled, anyways Naomi, let's get going. As the two redheads walk out of the office, Minato couldn't help but look at the only picture he had of his full family, it was the only one that actually included his missing son. I'm sorry Naruto-kun, he whispered sadly. Minato only knew that he was the one to blame for the disappearance of his son, he had pushed him aside when Tsunade has informed him of his condition. He had wanted to be able to have so many father-son moments however learning that his son had no chakra shattered his hopes. Naomi and Kashina as Naomi and her mother headed to the village gates, she couldn't help but wonder where her brother had gone to and if he was okay. After his departure she had reflected back on her life and what she remembered made her sick. She had been a total bitch to her brother when they learned that he couldn't be a shinobi. She would rub it in his face how she was getting all the cool ninja training and that she would be the one to lead their small clan. While he was nothing but a disgrace to the family name and now she regretted having said all that to him. She never knew how much it would hurt her when he left. Oni-sama, I want to see you again so I can tell you how sorry I am and how much I truly love you, Naomi said to herself. Omi-chan, come on we have to get to Kakashi quickly, Kashina called out to her daughter. When Kashina saw the look on her daughter's face she knew that she was thinking about her brother. Team Zabuza Naruto watched as Zabuza was currently giving the two dumbasses known as the Demon Brothers a beating on how stupid they had been. Not only had Zabuza told them to scout out their target and report to him as to who was going to be guarding him, but the dumbasses went ahead and tried to kill the target only to be stopped by Genin, Genin of all ranks. And now the ninjas guarding the old bridge builder were expecting to be attacked again. Not only that, but there was a high chance that they had called for backup. Well did you two at least recognize who was protecting the bridge builder? asked Zabuza. The tea each other then at Zabuza, it was Kakashi Hitaki. Naruto's eyes widened when he heard the name of his bastard father's only living student. His hand clenched into fist as he stood up and grabbed his cloak that was on chair he was sitting on. This mission had just gotten a little more complicated if that copycat was involved, however he knew that between Zabuza and him it would be no problem. Naruto kun. Haku whispered as she saw him get angry. Well at least we know who to expect, Zabuza said as he went to retrieve his sword, Haku, Naruto we're going now. As they were about to leave their current hideout Zabuza turned to look at the brother who seemed red to accompany them. You're staying here. Team Kakashi Kakashi was not having a good day, first he took his team to get a mission for the day, while there he had the urge to smack the Uchiha when he heard him demand a higher level mission from the Hokage. Of course just when he was about to say something his female student just had to go and open her mouth and agree that they need a higher level mission. His last student just looked like he was about to fall asleep and didn't care. Knowing that he wouldn't be able to get the Uchiha and his fangirl to shut up he decided to get a C rank mission. It was supposed to be an easy mission that required them to escort a bridge builder home and protect him from bandits and wild animals. But what happens, just hours after leaving the village they were attacked by two missing ninjas from Kirigakure. 
The famed demon brothers, who had been hiding in a puddle in the middle of a cloudless day. He of course just used the Kawarimi no Jutsu to get out of their chains and watched from the trees to see who their target was. He was surprised when they went after the bridge builder Tazuna, however his team managed to get over the shock of his death and defended the client. Well more like Sasuke and Shikamaru defended the client while Sakura just froze in her place. After he stepped in and incapacitated the rogue shinobi, he interrogated Tazuna and found out about the current situation in Nami no Kuni. Tazuna told them about how a man named Gato had taken over Nami and was driving the country into the dirt and that the only way of survival was his bridge. Kakashi was ready to abandon the mission and return to Konoha, but just as luck Sasuke said to continue the mission, of course Sakura quickly agreed with him, again. Shikamaru of course shocked him when he too agreed but made a point to him by telling to send a request for backup to the Hokage. Knowing that he was outvoted, he did just that, he sent his sensei a message and informed his team that the mission was now a B rank. Sasuke smirked, while Sakura paled a bit, though all that changed when he told them that there was a chance that the mission could go higher if they encountered more shinobi. So now here he was after crossing the waters into Nami, Kakashi was on high alert in case they were attacked again. Shikamaru who had taken up the rear guard was also on high alert for anything, Tazuna who was walking in the middle was looking rather nervous. Suddenly out nowhere a whooshing sound was heard. Get down, hit the dirt, shouted both Kakashi and Shikamaru at the same time. Kakashi grabbed Sasuke and Tazuna, pulling them to the ground, while Shikamaru did the same with a shocked Sakura. Whoosh 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 thunk. The group looked up to see a large Zanbadu stuck in a tree with a man standing on top of it. Said man was shirtless, with two cameo style armbands and pants. His face was half covered in bandages up to his nose and his headband was tilted slightly like Kakashi's, except not covering his eyes, holding up spiky black hair. The symbol of Kiri displayed on the headband with a slash mark running across the center. Well, well if it isn't Hitaki Kakashi, the man said, in rough sounding voice. Kakashi stood up and glared at the man. Momoichi Zabuza, the Kiri no Oni. I never would have expected someone like you to be working for the likes Gato. Zabuza shrugged, it helps pay the bills, however it's all worth it if I get to fight an opponent like you. You know back when I was in Kiri, you were listed as an A-rank shinobi with a kill on sight order in the bingo book. Hitaki Kakashi, the man who copied over a thousand jutsu. I had no idea that Kakashi sensei was that famous, Sakura thought. Now that the pleasantries are out of the way, why don't you hand over the old man and I'll let you and your genin squad go, Zabuza suggested. I'm sorry but you know we can't do that, Kakashi glared at the rogue ninja, it wouldn't look very good for Konoha if we just let you have him without even putting up a fight. Zabuza sighed, don't say I didn't try diplomacy first. Grabbing onto the hilt of his blade, Zabuza kicked off the tree. He landed on the surface of lake a little ways away, and made a hand sign. Let's see how well you can do Kakashi, Kirigakir no Jutsu. A thick mist spread across the land, blanketing the already misted area so heavily that no one could see more than a few feet in front of them. Defensive formation U3. Kakashi ordered his genin squad, causing them to surround Tazuna in a frontal triangle formation with Sasuke at the point. Shikamaru on the left and Sakura on the right. Zabuza is a master of the Muon Satsujin Jutsu, if you're not careful you'll be dead before you even know it. Protect the bridge builder and leave Zabuza to me, said Kakashi as he turned back towards the lake and began to lift up his headband, it looks like I'm going to need this. Ah. The Sharingan, Zabuza voice came from within the mist, his outlined form barely even visible, it's quite an honor to be facing it so soon. How did Kakashi sensei get that? Sasuke thought in shock. Only members of the Uchiha clan, my clan can have the Sharingan, could he? If Kakashi sensei is using the Sharingan then this guy must be a strong opponent, Shikamaru thought to himself. Still we both know that the Sharingan is useless if you can't even see, the mist began to thicken even more, making Zabuza disappear completely. Shit, this mist cuts down the Sharingan's effectiveness, Kakashi cursed, trying to peer into the mist. 8 points came the disembodied voice of Zabuza, causing the three genin and Tazuna to freeze as an intense killing intent filled the air. The liver, lungs, spine, clavicle vein, jugular artery, brain, kidney and the heart. Now, which one shall I choose first? Shit. 
Shikamaru cursed. This killing intent is unreal, and it makes it even worse with this mist. I can't see and I can barely think straight. Okay, first thing is first I need to calm down. Taking a deep breath Shikamaru pushed out his chakra to try and counter the killing intense effects like his father Tot told him to do. He instantly felt a little better, though it was still affecting him some. This, this killing intent, Sasuke thought, struggling to breathe against the killing intent the two Jonin were producing. Is this what a high level battle between two Jonin is like? This suffocating feeling, Sasuke began bringing a kanai to his throat. I don't think I can handle much more of it. Sasuke. Calm down. Kakashi said as he noticed the trouble his genin were having. I won't let any of my comrades die. Sasuke seemed to calm himself down, lowering his kanai. You're all talk Kakashi. Zabuza appeared right in the midst of the genin and Tazuna. Just as he was about to cleave them all with Kabikarihucho, Kakashi appeared right next to Zabuza and stabbed him in the gut, only for the Zabuza that he had stabbed to turn into water. Mizu Bunshin. Kakashi exclaimed right before Zabuza appeared behind him and cleaved him in half, causing Sakura to scream. However, much to Zabuza's surprise, Kakashi turned into water as well. It's over, Kakashi said as he appeared behind Zabuza and brought a kanai to the other ninja's throat. I see, Zabuza chuckled as he turned his head to look at the copy ninja. You created and switched yourself with a Mizu Buur speech didn't you? That eye of yours is quite impressive, however this battle is far from over. Zabuza swung his sword arm around, forcing Kakashi to duck under the powerful swing. Planting his sword into the ground, the mist ninja used the leverage it granted him to launch a powerful kick in Kakashi's face. Kakashi flew through the air with Zabuza following after him. The silver-haired Jonin threw some Makibishi spikes as he fell into the water, forcing Zabuza to stop. Makibishi spikes? Zabuza sneered beneath his mask. Come on Kakashi, are you even trying? Kakashi broke the surface of the water and gasped for some air, there's something wrong with this water. Ha! Huh. Now I've got you, Zabuza appeared right next to Kakashi, going through a set of hand seals, Sweden. Swiru no Jutsu. Kakashi cursed as he found himself trapped within a water prison, he looked over at his students and began to make orders. Run! Take the bridge builder and go. Oh they're not going anywhere Kakashi. Zabuza chuckled as he made a Mizu Bunshin to deal with the Genin. Get out of here, Kakashi yelled at his students. This battle was over the moment I got caught. He can't seriously think we can run does he? Sasuke wondered, even if we managed to escape now, he would just kill Kakashi and come after us. Sasuke ran towards the Mizu Bunshin in an attempt to surprise it. However as soon as he got in range the Zabuza clone kicked him in the ribs, sending the black-haired Genin flying back. Sasuke-kun. Sakura yelled in shock and fear at seeing her crush get hit so easily. Sasuke gasped out in pain as he landed on the ground and the air was forced from his lungs. He was about to get up when Zabuza appeared next to him and stepped on him, making the raven-haired Genin scream in pain as the Kiri Nuke Nin began to grind his foot into Sasuke's ribs. You kids think you're ninja? Zabuza sneered at the pathetic sight of Sasuke under his foot and screaming in pain. None of you are worthy of the title ninja, when you have stained your hands with as much blood as me, then you can be considered ninja. When you. Fuuden. Renkuden. Zabaza's speech was cut off as a cannonball sized ball of wind smashed into the Mizu Bunshin, forcing it to disperse back into water. The heads of all the Genin and Tazunas turned to see who had attacked the Mizu Bushin. The Genin were shocked when they saw none other than Kashina and Naomi walking towards them. As soon as Tazuna saw the leaf headbands he let out a sigh of relief. Naomi-san, Sakura nearly shouted. Kashina-sama, Kakashi said in with a sigh of relief of his own. Well, fuck, Zabuza said as he recognized the woman who had just arrived. Well Kakashi-kun you got yourself into some deep shit, Kashina said with a small smirk on her face, but don't worry that's why we're here. Sasuke who was getting up with some help from Sakura clenched his fist at how pathetic he must have looked in front of Naomi. Naomi you and the rest of the genin stay here and protect the client, Kashina ordered as she pulled out a tanto. Without waiting for an answer Kashina began to run towards Zabuza and the imprisoned Kakashi. As Kakashi watched his sensei wife run towards with a tanto in hand he pulled out Kanai from his pouch and got ready to strike Zabuza. 
Zabuza watched the red head coming to him and knew that he was trouble, he had no way of dodging her without releasing Kakashi. Once he released Kakashi and dodged the attack, the man was already ready to strike him the moment he was out. Though he didn't let that deter him as he was ready in case something like this occurred. As Kashina was about to reach and swing her tanto, something out of the corner of her eye caught her attention forcing her to stop and jump back. Right where she had been standing not even a second ago a yellow bolt of lightning struck the water creating a large splash. Kakashi got distracted from his target as he saw the attack on Kashina. Smirking Zabuza pulled out his arm from the water prison releasing the leaf ninja and jumped away from him back onto the shore of the lake. Kakashi who had fallen into the water quickly pulled himself to the surface. Both he and Kashina then returned to the shore of the lake where Zabuza was. Both of them were still wondering where the attack came from. Well, well looks like you're having quite the hard time Zabuza, said the voice of a young male instantly putting everyone on guard. Footsteps could be heard coming from the woods as they turned their heads to the source they saw a cloaked person walking towards Zabuza. About time you got here brat, said the man. Well what can I say I got lost on the road to life, the cloaked person said with a cheeky grin. The eyes of the genin along with Kashina and Naomi looked at Kakashi who had a dumbfounded look on his face as he heard this stranger use on of his excuses. Who is this guy? wondered Naomi as she looked at the accomplice of Zabuza with an uneasy feeling at the pit of her stomach. Well would you look at this, quite the team that old man managed to get, he continued, Kakashi no Sharingan, an Uchiha, Anara, and some civilian girl. Then we have two rather surprising people, Namikaze Kashina, the Akai Chishio no Habanero and the second Jinchuriki of the Kayubi no Yoko, her daughter, Konoha no Haim, Namikaze Naomi, the third Jinchuriki of the Kayubi no Yoko. The Leaf Shinobi were shocked, none more than Kashina, Kakashi, and Naomi as this person had just revealed some rather classified information. How do you know all that? shouted Naomi as she pulled out her Naganata. No one should know that kind of information, Kashina said narrowing her eyes his voice sounds familiar. Answer me, shouted Naomi as she began channeling chakra into her weapon. Well aren't you demanding, he said with a cocky tone, of course coming from the little Kyubi whore it don't surprise me. That did it, the insult pissed her off, and without any warning Naomi swung her Naganata releasing a powerful gust of wind. Of course her target just stood there and was blown back landing hard on his back. Naomi was breathing heavily as she had put a large amount of chakra into that one attack. As she was about to relax she heard a chuckle coming from the downed person as he began to stand back up. Ha ha ha, he laughed as he stood back up his cloak was ripped in some parts. How, Naomi asked herself. Now that wasn't very nice of you, he said as he grabbed his cloak and pulled it off, is that any way to treat me after all these years, Oni-chan? Naomi dropped her weapon as her eyes widened as she saw him take his cloak off. Kashina had tears in her eyes as she saw him. Kakashi was speechless, he didn't know what to think or do. The genin were wondering why they were so stunned at the sight of the boy in front of them. Standing before them was a boy their age with spiky blonde hair and blue eyes with a grin plastered on his face. Naomi took one step forward as she tried to think, but only one word left her mouth. Oni-sama. Oni-sama. Kashina could only stare, she didn't know what to think at the moment, her son, her lost son. She had finally found him, after eight years, he was standing in front of her. He had grown into a fine young man from what she could see, his blue eyes, spiky blonde hair and his outfit that consisted of a high collar sleeveless black shirt, black pants and boots, and black cloth covering his left leg. On his waist he has some kind of belt with pouches and she could also see vials filled with some sort of liquid. The Jenins were just staring at the scene before them, when they heard Naomi call this newcomer brother they then remember about the lost son of the Hokage. Shikamaru narrowed his eyes as he put his hands together and got ready. He knew that at the moment Naruto was not an ally. Sakura stared at the young blonde and for some reason began to think that since he was the son of the Hokage then he would help them. Sasuke on the other hand was another problem, he was angry at how he saw his girl stare at the blonde with tea should be for him. Kakashi was shocked at seeing his sensei's son standing in front of them, but more shocked that he wasn't on their side. He turned his attention to Kashina and saw that she was openly crying at seeing her son appear. Sochi-kun, Kashina whispered. Ha 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 ha, 
came the laughter of Zabuza as he walked up and stood next to Naruto, isn't this just the most wonderful family reunion? Kashina stopped looking at her son and glared at the rogue Kiri Shinobi, her glare intensified as she saw the man place his hand on his shoulder. As much as I would love to keep watching this, we have a job to finish, so I will say this again hand over the old man, Zabuza said. You bastard, came the voice of Naomi as she was also glaring at Zabuza, you took my Oni-sama, from us. You brainwashed him into hating us. For that I'm going to kill you, and then we'll take Oni-sama home with us. Naomi then bended down and picked up her Naganata and continued to glare at the man. Kashina also grabbed her Tonto and got ready. Zabuza, Kakashi said, I would suggest that you surrender, there is no way that you can keep fighting us and hope to win, I can tell that you're running low on chakra from our fight. Not to mention there are more of us. He he he, well that's not a hard problem to fix, Zabuza said. Kakashi narrowed his eyes at the man trying to figure out what he meant, well Naruto, do it. Naruto closed his eyes and began to concentrate, the others watched as Naruto's body began to glow, and the glow then began to spread over Zabuza. Kakashi's eyes then went wide as his Sharingan picked up what was actually happening. No, that's impossible, the leaf shinobi said. What's happening Kakashi? asked Kashina. Zabuza's chakra is replenishing at an alarming rate, he responded. Kashina looked back at her son and could help but feel saddened that her baby was helping an enemy instead of them. They all watched as the glow died and Zabuza stood there even though they couldn't see his mouth, they knew he had a smirk on his face. You were saying Kakashi, he taunted, now before we begin round two, Naruto power me up. Naruto let out a sigh as he shook his head, don't get overconfident no brows. With that what happened next was something they never seen before blue swords made of some strange blue energy appeared circling around both of them. Now that's more like, Zabuza said, Kakashi round 2 begins now. Without warning Zabuza shot towards Kakashi at a faster pace than before, Kakashi couldn't move fast enough to dodge the man. Putting his arms in front of him in an X he tried to block the attack. Though when Zabuza's kick connected, the Sharingan wielder was sent flying back. What the fuck, Kakashi thought, what the hell happened? That kick was stronger than before, it's like his strength was increased. Naruto watched as his mentor went back to fighting the Cyclops with an amused smirk on his face as he saw the look of disbelief on the man. His attention then turned back to the two red heads in front of him who were staring at him. Sochi kun, Kashina mumbled. Don't call me that bitch, Naruto said coldly. You have no right to refer to me as such after all the suffering you and that blonde asshole put me through. Kashina was taken back at the coldness in his voice and in the way he referred to her. Tears once again were rolling down her face. Why Sochi? Why? She asked as she fell to her knees crying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Naomi watched as her mother had an emotional breakdown, she gritted her teeth as she turned and glared at her brother. Oni-sama, why are you doing this? She asked, how can you hate us so much? How? How you ask? Naruto shouted at her, I was tossed aside while you got everything all because I can't use chakra and couldn't learn ninjutsu or genjutsu. Naomi stayed quiet at his comeback, it was true, they had tossed him aside from the moment they had learned that he was unable to use chakra. She could still remember when they used to play and laugh together and then when it all stopped, she hadn't been there for him, she like her family were torn, her brother would never become a ninja, and they wouldn't learn together, they wouldn't go on missions as a team. Naomi had tears in her eyes as she recalled the way she acted, like some spoiled little brat calling her brother names that she would hear the villagers call him. Oni-sama, please forgive us and come back, Naomi pleaded, come back, I promised things will be different this time, just come home with us. I could never forgive you or anyone else for that matter, Naruto said taking a stance, now the time for words has come and gone, better get ready bitch. Without another word the blonde shot forward at a faster pace than he should be able to move it, Naomi still her emotional state didn't move, Kashina watched as her son slam his leg into the side of his sister sending her tumbling across the ground. Naomi. Kashina shouted as she tried to run to her. Naruto turned his head to look at the incoming redhead, a smirk appeared on his face as his eyes then began to glow green. Kashina was unprepared as to what happened next, on moment she was in mid-run the next she on the ground as she had tripped over something. Looking down at her feet she saw that she hadn't tripped, she had been tripped. She glanced at her foot that was wrapped with vines then, 
her attention went back to Naruto. Mokotan? thought Kashina in disbelief as she glanced her son. Naruto however didn't let off there what he did next was something that Kashina wasn't expecting from his fingertips shot countless threads of a white substance that wrapped around her body. Kashina of course tried to move, but found that the white substance was holding her to the ground preventing her from moving too much. Okaa-san! shouted Naomi when she saw her mother trapped. Without thinking the young redhead shot forward to help her mother, before she could reach her, Naruto appeared in front of her and delivered another powerful kick to her side. Naomi was sent tumbling across the ground away from her mother. Naruto however didn't let up, he sprinted toward her, as the girl was getting up she felt the Kyubi inside of her sending chakra to heal the cracked rib that she had suffered from her brother's kick. As she was about to get up, she didn't see her brother coming until she felt another kick, this time to her stomach. Once again she was sent flying away. From her spot Kashina had tears in her eyes again, as she saw her son attack his own sibling without any remorse. Knowing that Naomi was in trouble she began to try and loosen the substance that was holding her down to go help her daughter. What's wrong bitch, can't fight back, shouted Naruto. Oni-sama, why? asked Naomi ignoring the insult, I know we made a mistake, but we're sorry for what we did to you. Sorry, as if I give a fuck, responded the blonde, I can never forgive any of you for all the pain you all caused me, the feeling of being alone, the pain of being ignored, I can never forget any of it. Naomi struggled, but managed to get back to her feet, the pain from her brother's attack was subsiding thanks to the Kyubi. With tears in her eyes she looked at her brother and knew that she had no choice but to fight him, as much as didn't want to, if she didn't, he would kill her. But, she wouldn't give up, she would fight him, knock him out, and she would take him back home. Gritting her teeth, Naomi ran towards her brother, her fist cocked back. Naruto saw her coming and got ready. Once she was in range, Naomi threw her fist only for Naruto to use his palm to deflect it, however the girl didn't end her assault there. Spinning around she brought her leg up for a kick, once again Naruto blocked it this time with his forearm. Naruto pushed her leg away and threw a fist of his own, the girl ducked and using her quickness, she kicked Naruto's leg making him lose his balance. Without missing a beat she delivered a powerful uppercut to the blonde knocking him onto his back. From his spot Naruto glanced at the e-blood from his injured lip. Naomi looked slightly winded from the small skirmish. I see that you're better than I thought, Naruto said standing up and dusting of the dirt from his clothes, might as well get serious. With a grin Naruto brought his two fists together, Naomi watched with wide eyes as she saw some kind of blue energy. Naruto then separated his fist and in his hand he now held something that resembled a bone made out of energy or something. Without warning he shot forward spinning the bone in his hands, Naomi pulled out two kanais as her naginata had been thrown aside by her brother. Naruto began his assault on her, the redhead could only block with her kanais. Kashina was shocked at what she saw, she had never seen anything like what Naruto had done. She remembered when Tsunade had told them that he was unable to mold chakra yet here he was using some sort of energy that resembled chakra. Could he have found a way to mold chakra during his eight year absence? No she didn't have time to think about that she, she would get her answer after they captured him. For now she had to get free from her restraints, she was close too, she could almost touch the ground. Naruto on the other hand was clashing his bone made out of energy against Naomi's kanais. The young redhead knew that she had to get her naginata back. Gritting her teeth, Naomi pushed her brother back and as fast as she could she channeled Charka into her foot and slammed it into her twin's stomach. Naruto was sent rolling across the ground away from Naomi. As he got back up he glared at the redhead who was running through some hand signs. Wind style. Great breakthrough, shouted the girl as she released a ball of condensed air. Naruto was about to jump to escape the attack, however before he could something wrapped around his ankle. Looking down, his eyes went wide when he saw that he was being held in place by chains. His eyes went to Kashina who had managed to free a hand from his string shot. Before he could do anything else he felt the wind jutsu hit him full force. The chain on his ankle was also released. Naomi's jutsu sent Naruto flying back into the woods crashing through trees. Naomi ran to her mother and began coating her kanai with wind chakra to slice the bindings that held her mother down. Once Kashina was released both women looked at the spot that Naruto had landed in waiting for his next move. Naruto meanwhile had gotten back on his knees and was breathing heavily, that combo had taken him by surprise and it was due to his cockiness. 
He remembered what Zabuza had told him, to not let his hatred for his family blind him or else it would come to bite him in the ass. And that just what he had done he had let his anger get to him, but now he had calmed down, and it is payback time. Gritting his teeth he summoned the power of the zap plate and electricity began coursing through his body. With a roar he discharged the electricity from his body blasting everything around him away. Kashina and Naomi jumped back at the sight of electricity being thrown around. Both of their mouths and eyes went wide when they saw Naruto walking towards them. His body was bleeding in places but what drew their attention was the lightning that covered his body with bolts hitting the ground. Raiden. Though Kashina. What in the world is going on? How did you get all this power? Oni-sama, whispered Naomi. With a loud roar Naruto sent the electricity in a powerful discharge blasting everything around him away. Both red heads covered their eyes to protect them from the debris of the blast. When they uncovered their eyes the two were flabbergasted at the sight before them. The trees, and the grass was gone in a twenty-foot radius, also in the spot Naruto was standing was a small crater now. With a smirk Naruto balled his hands into fist and once again electricity engulfed them. However before Naruto could take a step forward, a loud crashing sound followed by a scream of pain echoed through the air. Naruto turned his head and saw that Zabuza had been sent crashing into the trees and was slowly getting back up. It was over, the fight was over, and they had underestimated their opponents. With a quick glance back at the redheads, Naruto let out a growl as he used his agility technique to reach Zabuza faster than Kakashi could. Zabuza! shouted Naruto as he reached the downed man. Oni sama, Sochi, called out the redheads as they ran to stop him. Enjoy your victory today, Naruto said with a glare, next time it will be different. With that said, Naruto picked up Zabuza and pulled his arm over his shoulder. Kashina sent a chakra to stop Naruto from escaping. However before the chain could reach him, out of thin air a mirror that seemed to be made of intercepted it. Next to Naruto another person landed clad in what seemed to be hunter ninja clothing and helped pick up Zabuza. Together they quickly disappeared into the woods, with a small glance back Naruto saw Kakashi fall to the ground. Kashina watched as her son, who she hadn't seen in so long, and finally finds him, once again run away from them, this time though she knew their paths would cross again and when they do she would be the one to defeat him and bring him home. For now she had to focus on helping Team 7 protect the client. Fuck! shouted Naruto as he punched a tree, I had her, I fucking had her. Naruto rested his forehead on the tree trunk, anger still plainly visible on his face as he thought of his fight with his mother and sister. Naruto calmed down, Haku said scowling at her companion, what happened out there? You promised me that you wouldn't let your hatred get the better of you yet that is not what I saw. The blonde turned to look at Haku who was still looking displeased as he could tell from the way she was taping her foot on the ground. He knew what she was referring to, before heading to the fight Kakashi and his genin team he had made her a promise to not allow his anger to blind him. He was calm until he saw that the white-haired Jonin had indeed called for backup and it came in the form of his mother and sister. Also what was that with the string shot you should have known that it wouldn't keep a Jonin down for long, Haku questioned. It was in the spur of the moment, I couldn't think of another way to restrain her fast, Naruto answered her. What about that fucking spiderweb dumbass, came the gruff voice of Zabuza. Both teens turned to look at Zabuza who was resting against a tree giving the blonde a glare. Haku had already healed most of the man's wounds, however the damage that he had received from Kakashi would take him about a week to recover. Also I agree with Haku, what the hell was that? You were practically playing with the girl for most of your fight, the man stated, if you couldn't kill her, then you should have knocked her out instead. Naruto gritted his teeth at the comment that he wasn't capable of killing her. Naruto, as much as you say that you hate her, I know deep down in your heart there is still a part of you that cares for her, Haku said. Naruto turned to her and gave her a glare which she gave back to him, Zabuza didn't say anything as he just stared at his two students. There is no care in my heart for that bitch. Next time I face her I will kill her, Naruto said. There won't be a next time dumbass, Zabuza said, next time we come face to face with them it will be a hell of a lot different, the one you most likely will fight is your mother. That bitch isn't my mother, Naruto said. Slap the sound of flesh hitting flesh echoed through the areas leaving only silence apart from the random bug that made a noise. Naruto whose face had been forced to look the other direction looked at the arm and saw Haku giving him the most heated glare she had ever given him. 
Stop acting like a spoiled brat Naruto-kun, she said, I know of how you said they treated you, but that is in the past, let it go. Let it go. Let it go. How the fuck am I supposed to let the way they treated me go? Naruto raged at her. Naruto, enough. Zabuza shouted he help of the tree, we'll talk about this later, let's head back to our hideout I need to rest and you need to cool down. With an angry huff Naruto went and took one of Zabuza's arms throwing it over his shoulder and began to move to the hideout. Haku who was still angry at her friend followed quietly behind them. Konoha group it wasn't long after the run in with Zabuza and Naruto that the leaf shinobi had finally arrived to their destination, Nami no Kuni. Throughout the remaining time to get to Nami, all the genins had been quiet while the adults were still thinking of how Zabuza got a hold of Naruto and about the report that they would have to send the Yandaimi. Naomi was thinking about how easily her knee Sama had defeated her, according to her father she was at least a solid chunin in strength, yet she was tossed around like a genin. But she couldn't really come up with a reasonable excuse, she knew that if her brother had been with Zabuza then he would have more experience in battle than her. However she still could get over how Naruto had talked to her and her mother and as awkward as felt, when they fought she felt a little, excited. Shikamaru had the same line of thought that Kakashi probably had. His father had told him about the son of the Yandaimi, a boy who had been born without chakra. That was something he never understood, you need chakra to live, and everyone has chakra in their bodies even civilians. Yet, from what he had been sensing in the battle between Naomi and Naruto, Naruto used some sort of ninjutsu that didn't require chakra. Although he could have sworn that he felt another type of energy in his body, it was nearly unnoticeable, but it was there. Sakura was being Sakura, and the only thing going through her head was that the blonde bastard only went after the redhead because he was too afraid to face her Sasuke-kun. Sasuke was in a different state of mind after watching the battle between the Namikaze twins, he was pissed at how strong they were. He had been training hard every day to avenge his clan, but, after watching that battle he had seen that the world was unfair, a bastard without the ability to manipulate chakra was far stronger than he a member of the Uchiha clan was. He would find that bastard and force him to teach him or give him whatever was making him strong. He needed that power that didn't use chakra to kill his brother. It was night time in Nami and everyone had gathered together to talk about what they would be doing when Zabuza returned. I have sent a message to Hokage-sama informing him of our encounter with Zabuza and Naruto, Kakashi said, we will wait to receive his orders, I just hope they come back in time. Naomi just stood up from her seat and walked to the door, I'm gonna go get some fresh air, I need to think about something. Kashina just watched her daughter leave, she knew that she was hurting from her reunion with her twin, and not just her, she too was hurt. For year Kashina had spent a lot of time searching for her son, every time she was on a mission she would talk to the locals to see if a boy with his description had been in the area. All those times she had been unsuccessful, but now after so long her baby had finally appeared. When she saw him she couldn't help but want to run up to him and embrace him, however a part of her had been afraid that he would hate her. And that was how it was, her son despised her and her family. Now she was worried about what he thought of Konoha as a whole, did he hate the village also? Even if he did, he's her son and she will take him back home one way or another. Konoha Minato had finally gotten home after a long day in the office. Having to do paperwork, meet with clients, send teams on missions really tired him out and top of it all his wife and daughter had gone on a mission to back up his student and his team. Sighing he was about to go to the kitchen to find something to eat when someone knocked on his door. This of course surprised him as not many people came to his house and knocked, only a few did and they mostly came around when Kashina was home. Walking to the door and opening it, he was face to face with the tracking squad he had sent out earlier that week in search of a missing chunin. Hokage-sama, we found him, the woman in the front said, but we need to tell you something very important. What is it? Come in, Minato said moving aside to allow her and her team inside. The thing is when we found Suzuki, he was deceased, Sume said making the blonde man cringe, however after searching a bit more we found the smell of the perpetrator. You did? Well did you recognize the smell? Asked the man. Yes I did, it was a smell that I hadn't sensed in a long time, Hokage-sama, and I don't know how to say this but the person who killed him was, Sume said with a solemn face, Namikaze Naruto, your son. Minato's eyes went wide at the sound of his missing son's name. His own flesh and blood had killed one of his shinobis, then something else hit him. 
Over the past eight years many other shinobi had also gone missing during missions mostly Jenin and Shunin, and the occasional Jonin. But now that he heard this could it have been possible that the reason those ninjas had died was because they had come across Naruto? Sumei I want you and your team to keep this to yourselves for now while I think about how to approach this situation, Minato said, if the council learns of this then they will demand that Naruto be placed in the bingo book. We understand Minato, was all Sumei managed to say when a puff of smoke appeared in between them. When the smoke cleared all that was left was a small brown dog wearing a leaf headband and a blue vest. Yo Minato, I have an urgent message from Kakashi and Kashina, the dog said pulling out a scroll from his vest. Minato took the scroll from him and began to read it, his eyes went wide at what he was reading and he suddenly had an idea. Sumei go and send a message to assemble the council, Minato ordered. What? Sumei questioned. Kashina and Kakashi might have just given me a very vital piece of information, just go once the council is together everything will become clear, he said with a smile. It was twenty minutes later that the council had gathered in an urgent meeting. Sitting on one side were the clan heads from the most prominent families, on the other side was the Anbu Black Ops chief along with the three civilian representatives. Also in the meeting were the three elders of the village. The door to the council room opened and in walked Minato along with his sensei Jiraiya of the Sanin and his predecessor the third Hokage of the Konohagakure, Serutobi Hiruzen. Minato took his seat while Jiraiya stood next to him. Meanwhile Serutobi went and took his seat as the head of his clan. The blonde Hokage looked around the room and thinking on how to start this council meeting. His gaze met the clan heads who were waiting for him to start, with a heavy sigh he began. Thank you all for coming on such short notice, Minato began, the reason as to why I have summoned all of you is because of something that I have discovered. What did you discover Hokage-sama? asked a man with white eyes who at first glance one would think he was blind. Not too long ago, Sumei, whom I had sent out on a mission earlier this week returned with some vital information that will bring some unresolved cases to a close, he said. Are you talking about the death of many of our shinobi? asked the female elder Kaharu. Indeed, this time it was Sumei who answered. All the people in the room instantly became very interested in the news. Many of the clan heads had lost some of their members and to learn that they had a lead to the perpetrator was good news to them. A couple of weeks ago I sent Shunin, Yoshida Suzuki, on a mission to Tori no Kuni, unfortunately, he never returned to the village, Minato said with a sad look on his face, we declared him Mia, at the time he had some important information for the village, so I sent Sumei and a team of tracker ninjas to locate him. By the time they gasped, but this was not any kind of ambush, he still had all the document on his person when he was found. That stunned the council, they knew that if someone had been after him for the documents that he had, they would have taken them. Yet here they were being told that the papers were recovered, that could only mean that he had come across a bounty hunter or an enemy shinobi. Hokage sama, I take it that Sume sama found the scent of who could have done it? asked a man who wore sunglasses. Indeed, she did shibi, Minato said, looking over at the wild looking woman. When my team found Suzuki, we checked his body, and like Hokage sama said, the papers were still on him. Sume began. I had one of my team members who is also a medic check the man, and he found a stab wound in the middle of his chest. A stab in the middle of the chest instantly made everyone aware that whoever killed him might also be responsible of the death of many ninjas in the past four years. The village didn't always recover the bodies of their ninjas quickly, sometimes it could take a few weeks to months before they got the bodies and that's if they got the bodies. When they did they were sent for an autopsy to see the cause of death and the results were always the same the ninja died of a stab wound in the chest. So that means whoever killed him, is also responsible for the deaths of the other shinobi, said the white eye man, well did you recognize the scent Sume-san? Sume hesitated for a second, she glanced at Minato who just gave her a nod, taking a deep breath she looked back at the members of the room. At first I didn't smell anything. It wasn't until I was close to the body that I smelled something familiar, it was a scent that I had been asked to track down years ago by Hokage-sama, the scent that I got from him was that of, Sume said as the room was quiet, Namikaze Naruto. The entire room was silent, so silent that not even crickets were making a sound, eyes fell on the blonde Hokage then back to the woman. They were stunned beyond anything in the life, they all knew of the missing child of the Hokage. A child that was born without chakra someone who should have died at birth, but somehow lived. 
He was also known in the village as a disgrace to the Hokage's family and the Uzumaki clan that his mother was a part of. Someone who would never be a shinobi, would never inherit the title of clan head. You're joking, right Sume? Asked a rather large man named Shuza. I'm afraid not, she replied. This time a platinum blonde haired man spoke up, but how is that possible? The child was born without chakra, even if he got some training he would never be able to defeat a shinobi, especially a chunin. Hokage sama, spoke up Hiyashi Hayuga, do you know anything else? You seem a little too calm knowing that your son has been killing our shinobi. Minato, spoke Serutobi for the first time, I know this is hard for you, but if your son has indeed been killing leaf ninjas, then you must do what is best for the village and place him in the bingo book. And there it was, the moment the Minato had been waiting for, for someone to bring up the point of putting Naruto in the bingo book to be hunted down by hunter nins. That would be the first thing I would have done when I heard that my son was the killer, Minato said but before we go further I would like to bring a new piece of information. Minato, there is no point in saying anything, Kaharu said, your son has to be taken care of unless you want him to keep killing our shinobi, Homura, Danzo say something. I agree with Kaharu, Hokage-sama, spoke Homura. I understand that it is the right thing to do, however listen to this first, Minato said, a few days ago I sent out Team 7 lead by Kakashi Hitaki on a mission to wave. This mission was a C rank, that however turned into B-rank mission when his team encountered the demon brothers of Kiri, his team decided to continue the mission and sent a request for backup, which I sent in the form of my wife and daughter. What does this have to do with your son? asked Homura. I was getting to that, the blonde said. Kakashi then face off against another missing nin, this time however was someone stronger than Chunin's, it was Zabuza Momochi, it was also during that time that Kashina and Naomi arrived to rescue him and Team 7. However before Kashina could strike Zabuza down another of the man's companions entered the fight, this time it was, Naruto. What, you're saying that your son is in league with one of Kirigakir's most dangerous missing nins? asked Homura. Now he really has to be put in the bingo book, a civilian shouted. Minato you wouldn't be telling us this if there was more, spoke a man with black hair who looked to just awoken from a nap. Indeed, he said, while Kakashi once again engaged Zabuza in a fight, Naomi and Kashina tried to apprehend Naruto, but it was tougher than they expected. Naruto managed to immobilize Kashina and engage Naomi in a fight. During the fight according to Kashina, he used ninjutsu. But, that is impossible, said a blonde woman, I checked Naruto myself when he was just a child and his chakra coils were empty of chakra there is no way he should be able to use ninjutsu, even if he somehow defied the law and has lived this long. That is why I'm saying this. If Naruto has somehow obtained a Keke Jenke that allow him to use ninjutsu without chakra, what else is he capable of? We never gave him a chance to see his potential when he was a child. Also, if this gets out to other villages that he has a bloodline that don't require chakra to use ninjutsu, do you really think that they wouldn't try and obtain it? Minato said. A ninja capable of using ninjutsu without chakra, a strange Keke Jenke that enables him to do so, Shukaku said. If this information go to Kumo or Iwa then they would do anything to get their hands on Naruto to try and breed a whole new generation of shinobi. Then the only option at the time would be to bring Naruto here to the village to face a trial for his crimes and be punished here, Shibi said. Indeed, but if the boy does have a new Keke Jenke then it would be prudent to first see if it capable of being passed down before the boy is imprisoned or executed for the crimes against the leaf. Danzo spoke getting the attention. Hokage-sama are you planning on sending out a team of Anbu to capture him? Hiyashi's hard gaze fell on Minato as he thought of all the members of his clan that fell to the boy, he wanted to see some punishment. Inoichi mind was in the same mind track as he thought of his fellow clan members who had died in the past few years, he knew that both Shuza and Shukaku had also lost a few members. Sumei and Shibi had been some of the lucky ones to not have had a member of their clan die at the hands of Naruto. Serutobi and his student Tsunade just stayed quiet, well the blonde woman wanted to check Naruto's body again to see what had changed since the last time. Since we can't risk Naruto falling into the hands of another village by placing him in the bingo book, I have decided that he will be captured and brought here to face his punishment, Minato said. Hokage-sama, if you will allow me I will put together a team of my best Anbu to capture the boy, spoke the Anbu commander. No, Minato said. The person who will be going after Naruto will be. With all the attention on him, 
he glanced at his teacher who had stayed quiet throughout the entire meeting and gave him a nod. Myself. Naruto sat looking at the sun rise in the horizon, his mind still fogged from the fight he had with his former family. The nerve of that woman to call him her child after all she did to him when he was small, now she says that she's sorry for what she did and that she wants him to return to the village to be the happy family that they're supposed to be. As if he would go back to that hell hole, he left to find a place to belong a place where he would be able to become who he was meant to be. He swore that he would make them pay for what they had done Otto do it, however he allowed his anger to blind him. But he would get a second chance soon enough and when he did then he would not let what happened repeat itself, this time he would go all out. However he knew that the next time he fights he will need more power and for that he will need to awaken another plate. The blonde stood up from his spot on the roof of their current hideout and jumped to the ground. Quietly he walked up to the door only for it to open before he could touch it. Naruto stepped back as he saw that his female teammate was coming out with a basket in hand. Good morning Haku-chan, greeted the blonde. Morning Naruto-kun, Haku replied even though she was still a little mad at her blonde companion. Where are you headed this early in the morning? Just going to find some herbs to help Zabaza's wounds heal faster. Naruto let out Sai, even though he could recover, there was a limit as to the amount of damage he could heal. Bruises and minor cut or fractures were easy enough along with restoring lost stamina and chakra, but the damage Zabuza received in his fight with Hitaki, those were beyond his level. Now the man was bedridden healing the old-fashioned way, but with Haku's medical knowledge he would be up and about within a few days. Okay, just be careful, Naruto told her as he moved out of the way. I will, with that Haku made her way to the forest to look for the herbs she needed. Naruto watched her go hoping that she would be alright, who the hell was he fooling, he knew Haku could take care of herself. After seeing her disappear in the trees, the bond walked inside the hut and went to sit on the mat in a lotus position, it was time to start the test for a new plate. Mindscape When Naruto opened his eyes he found himself in one of the strangest places yet. He found himself in a mountainous area, that alone wasn't the strange thing though, what was strange was that there were strange blue crystals all over the place. The blonde soon began to walk around to try and locate the answer to awakening this plate. The more he walked the more he was amazed by the place, soon he came to a cliff that gave a great view of a giant tree. Man that is one big tree, he said to himself but what is this weird thing I'm sensing, it feels familiar for some reason, oh well questions for later. Naruto turned his back to the tree and began to walk, but soon stopped when he heard a rustling sound. Quickly turning he saw that a shrub had been hit by the wind or something. Just as he was about to turn around a shadow fell over him. As if sensing the danger, Naruto, jumped as fast as he could just as something crashed into the ground causing a dust cloud to kick up blocking his sight. The blonde quickly brought his palms together and took his regular stance to get ready for whoever or whatever would appear. That was quite the evasion, a soft voice said. Naruto's head turned in the direction of the trees and watched as a tall man walked out of from within the forest. He had dark blue hair, he wore a strange outfit that consisted of grey pant, grey undershirt with a blue vest over it, blue boots, blue gloves with a blue jewel of some sort, a dark cape, and in his left he had a staff with a large sapphire on it. Though the one feature that drew the blonde's attention the most were the man's ocean blue eyes, the very same color of his. Before he could respond the man he, Naruto, was forced to dodge an incoming attack. Now he finally got a glance at the thing that had attacked him before the man appear. In front of Naruto, where he had been standing not too long ago was a tall bipedal dog-like creature glaring at him. Who the hell are you two? Naruto asked as this was the first time he actually met someone that could communicate with him within his mindscape. Oh how rude of me, the man said, the name I go by is Sir Aaron, and the Pokemon before you is my friend and partner Lucario. And we are here on behalf of Arceus Sama to give you the toughest test yet. From Arceus, the blonde repeated, it had been years since he had heard anything about Arceus, what is my test then? Sir Aaron chuckled before he responded, your test is to defeat Lucario using nothing more than aura. Aura? repeated the blonde. E.H., said a confused Aaron, you don't know what aura is? Sorry this is the first time hearing that word actually, Naruto said turning his attention to Lucario who had released a growl. Really? Well then I will give you the abridged version. Aura is the spiritual energy that lies in the bodies of humans, this energy can be used to do many things, it can help you communicate telepathically 
Sense those around you, create barriers, and even create attacks, Sir Aaron said. Sounds almost like chakra, murmured the blonde. In way it is, but however aura is more versatile and can be deployed in a more pure form, it's also the essence of life, the man said. The essence of life, wait, is that why I'm alive? Sir Aaron smiled, yes, it's shocking, but you are alive because aura replaced the chakra that you were born without, and with aura you will be able to use some of the same skills as shinobi, such as tree walking and water walking, but to get there you must first reach a certain level in using aura. Sir Aaron, this talk has gone long enough, it's time to finish what Arceus Sama requested us to do, Lucario spoke for the first time. Indeed my friend, Aaron responded, Naruto-kun it's time, you must fight Lucario using only aura, all you need to do is reach deep within you and grasp the essence that has been dormant within you. Before Naruto could ask something, Sir Aaron tossed him a piece of cloth. One more thing, as I said you must awaken and use your aura to defeat Lucario, but to do this you must fight blindfolded, this will help you use your other senses that will help you with completing this task, Aaron commented. As soon as Naruto put the cloth on, he was sent flying back courtesy of a strong kick to the stomach. As the blonde stumbled through the ground, Lucario jumped into the air and its foot began to glow as he dived down towards Naruto. Just as Naruto was getting back to his feet gritting his teeth, he tried to use his ears to pick up any movement around him like Zabuza had tried to teach him. However for some reason he was unable to pick up anything, then out of nowhere he was struck on the side of his head knocking him to the ground once again. Sir Aaron stood in his same place watching as how his first student attacked the blonde and couldn't help but wonder why it was taking him so long to open his senses to the aura within. Something was not right, the man frowned as he saw Lucario deliver another powerful force palm. Lucario stop, Sir Aaron called out to his student. The bipedal dog stopped at the command from his master and glared down at the blonde who removed the blindfold and glared at Aaron. Take a break Naruto-kun, the man said not even bothered by the glare. Why can't I use the power of the other plates I already awaken? The blonde asked. Sir Aaron looked at him that turned his gaze to the sky, why? It's quite simple, the fist plate is the fighting type, which in turn is more in tune with aura. It is why most of the fighting type Pokemons were able to use Aura much easier than the other types. So if I can use Aura then I will be able to use the fighting type moves and abilities a lot easier? Indeed, the man said, all you need to do in reality is pull the Aura and you will awaken the plate, after awakening it, it's up to you to practice with it to learn how to master the pure Aura and not its elemental variety. Meanwhile back in Konohagakure, the Hokage was in his home preparing for his trip to Nami where he would be apprehending his own flesh and blood. It pained Minato to have to resort to this, but it's the only way that he would be able to bring him back home. Yet even when he does bring his son back, there is no guarantee that he will forgive them from what he and Kashina did to him. Still he had to try and he would keep on trying till he forgives them and then Dili that they were meant to be. Looking up from his work, he glanced out the window and looked at the bright moon that showered the village in its soothing glow. When he brings Naruto back he knows that the council will do everything in their hands to get his son's mysterious abilities at any cost. Soon, we will be a family again even if I have to use this, Minato said looking at this hands. Konoha Shinobi Naomi was sitting on the roof of Tazuna's house looking at the moon wondering if her brother was also looking up at it. Just thinking about him brought tears to her eyes, it had been all her fault that her brother had abandoned them. She could have been there for him but she was far too focused on the attention that she was given that she became blind to anything else. Now here she was face to face with her brother again after eight long years and things had sure changed a lot. Naruto had become strong, stronger than she thought he could ever be, and he didn't without being able to use chakra at all. She wondered how he acquired such powerful skills that allowed him to immobilize their mother for a few minutes. Yet she had also been tossed around like a ragdoll all because she didn't want to hurt him, however he didn't have a problem hurting them. Sighing, Naomi stood up and turned around to look at her former classmate whom had decided to show up. What the hell do you want Sasuke? She asked in an annoyed tone. TCH, you're thinking about that loser aren't you? The Uchiha responded, I don't see what the big deal everyone is making about him, he got lucky against you. My Oni-sama is no loser Teme, she said angrily making the boy scowl. He's a loser who left because he was weak, and yet you still pin to him. I don't see what you see in him that makes him better than an elite Uchiha such as myself, Sasuke said. 
Sooner or later you will become mine one way or another. With those words the duck-haired boy left, leaving a seething Naomi behind who seemed ready to pull a kanai and stab it into his skull. Kashina who had been close frowned as she heard what the arrogant brat had told her daughter both about her son and how he would own her one way or another. Never had she had the urge to kill the son of her friend before, but now that's what she wanted to do. However something else occupied her mind, she kept thinking back to the encounter with Naruto. He had been able to subdue her with that strange silky thread and her chakra chains had been unable to remove it, which meant that he didn't use chakra, but that was impossible no. Ka san? Kashina heard the voice of her daughter call her. Naruto he didn't know how long he had been here, nor did he have the time as he kept being sent crashing through the ground by a dog. Naruto shakily once again stood up and saw nothing but darkness as he was still blindfolded, how was he supposed to defeat an opponent who was a master at using aura without seeing and using his plate's powers? Fuck, this is fucking ridiculous, how am I supposed to fight this mutt, I need the power of my plates, yet this bastard says I can't use them, and his explanation of aura was so vague, thought Naruto angrily, come on Naruto think, there has to be a way to awaken this aura shit. Calm down and concentrate, let go of your emotions and concentrate on your task ahead, a voice suddenly said in the blonde's mind, a rather familiar voice. It can't be, Naruto said, Arceus? Indeed, I can barely communicate at the moment, I'm using the little energy I can to do so now, but for now concentrate like I said, the god of Pokemon said, we will meet again. With that just like he had spoken to him, he was gone again, but even if it was for just a little bit, he had heard the voice of the one he cared for, and that made him happy. Okay just like Arceus said, concentrate you dumb blonde, he repeated, first thing first calm down. Naruto took in a deep breath and then released it, he inhaled and exhaled again, slowly he began to calm down. Images of his former family soon surfaced and once again he began to get pissed, but he stopped for a moment. No, now's not the moment, tossed your anger aside, that's it, the blonde muttered, feel all around you. Letting the images fade into the background, Naruto began to look deeper into himself, he had to do this. Then he saw something, ahead of him he could see a small blue orb, he lifted his hand and reached for it. While he tried to reach time for him seemed to get longer. Sir Aaron, gasped as he felt what he had been waiting for, a small smile appeared on his face as he saw that his student also sensed it. It looked like the air had finally done it, he had taken a big step towards his future. Lucario shot forward to strike down the blonde, his paw began to glow white as he charged up a focus punch. Once close he threw the attack, however the attack never hit home, as Naruto's hand shot up and grabbed his wrist stopping the attack. I see you Lucario, he said smirking as he cocked his free hand back and his fist glowed blue before punching the dog sending him flying for the first time. Naruto wasted no time, he ran straight at his opponent, both of his fist glowing with the blue flame like energy that he had finally discovered. Without even stopping his momentum, he ducked as Lucario formed a bone club to strike him with. A smirk plastered on his face, he delivered an uppercut hitting the dog in its chin lifting him slightly off the ground. He didn't stop there though, as he used his other fist to punch him in the stomach knocking him away only to land at the feet of Sir Aaron. Well, how was that, Naruto said removing the blindfold. Very well done Naruto-kun, the man said with a smile, you finally did it. Before the blonde a dull colored plate appeared before it began to glow turning a maroon color signifying that it had awakened. Now that you have awakened the aura within you, it is up to you to harness its full power, Aaron said. Our time together may have been short but we will surely meet again in the future, for now return as you friends are getting worried. Thank you, Naruto said with a slight bow. Go, and make the Arceus Sama proud as you were his legacy. With that Naruto disappeared from his mind returning to the real world. Although he released some of it, his hatred still for his family still runs deep in order to fully become one with the plates he must let go of it, Eren said. Indeed, Arceus Sama, never hated humans, he didn't like them either, Naruto must learn to do the same, Lucario said standing up. Are you alright? Yes, he punched me well, but it's nothing I can't handle, I did take it easy on him after all. Ha <laughs> ha. Yes you did, had you mega evolved he would never had done it, for now it's enough, next time though it will be different. Hideout it had been 4 days since Naruto had gone into his mind to awaken a plate the longest time he had ever taken. Zabuza was sitting on the couch as he stared at the blonde, 
Haku was making something to eat. The day that they would confront the Konoha shinobi was approaching and the brat had to wake before they can go. Sighing he closed his eyes to rest a little, when he was suddenly hit with a wave of powerful energy. Eyes snapping open the man stared as Naruto stood up from his position, as a bluish hue covered his body, his eyes open revealing a pair of glowing blue eyes. Holy shit, what is this energy? Zabuza thought, he's stronger now, I can feel it. Naruto-kun, spoke a worried Haku who had ran into the room with Senban in her hands ready to attack. I'm back, the brat said with a smirk as the energy died down. About time brat, the man said, get ready we will be striking at dawn. Zabuza stood up and walked out of the hideout, Haku came up to Naruto and wrapped her arms around him. Baka don't worry me like that again, she said softly. I'll try not to, he said, soon I will be able to put my past behind me, thank you Arceus. Now they will soon know the full power of Nami, no, of Arusius Naruto. Naruto stood at the door of the hideout his gear was Alri would finally clash with his former family for the last time and this time there was no holding back. After the awakening of the fist plague he had no time to actually practice with it to get used to it and to learn the attacks so he would have to rely on his other plates. From the corner of his eye he could see both Haku and Zabuza were done getting ready and they would soon march to the bridge to kill the target. Let's go, Zabuza said as he placed his sword on his back. Asterisk Tazuna's house Naomi was standing at the door waiting for the rest of the team to finish getting ready to escort Tazuna to the bridge. It had been almost a week since they had arrived and she knew that the fated day to encounter her Oni-sama was growing closer. Hearing footsteps she saw Sasuke approaching the door with his loyal fangirl at his heels, something that made her sick. Sakura was nothing more than a nuisance to them as she was the weakest of their generation. Not too far behind them came the laziest member of their team still yawing and complaining about not getting enough sleep. Oheo Shikamaru, she greeted the lazy Nara making the Uchiha scowl at being ignored. Oheo, he responded with a big yawn. Oheo Mina, came the voice of Kashina as she dragged the sulking Kakashi, everyone ready? The group nodded as they began to file out of the house where Tazuna stood waiting along with his daughter. About time, he said. Well since we're all ready now let's get going, Naomi said as she made a hand sign, cage bushin no jutsu. A single clone of Naomi appeared beside her. The clone would remain in the house as extra protection in case one of Gato's people came to try something. Now they set out to the bridge no one talked on the way there except for Kashina who was making small talk with Kakashi. However, what none of them noticed was that they were being watched by a figure on top of a roof. The group stopped dead in their tracks as soon as they arrived at the bridge, the sight before them making them gasp. Laying on the ground covered in blood were the bodies of the brave workers who were helping with the construction of the bridge. Without any thought Tazuna ran toward the fallen men. What the hell happened here? Asked Tazuna in a shaky voice as he looked at his fallen friends. TT the mist, said one of the men who was barely alive, TT they came ff from it. All of the sudden a fog began to cover the bridge, the group surrounded Tazuna while pulling out their kanais. Sensei, it's Zabuza right? Asked Sakura, this is his Kirigakir no jutsu isn't? Yes, it's him. He he he, came a chuckle, sorry to keep you all waiting, it seems that the two of you are still babysitting them brats. Oni-sama, thought Naomi as she glanced around trying to find Naruto. Sasuke though was shaking a bit as he tried to find his enemies. He he he, that one is still trembling, pitiful, Zabuza said. When Sasuke heard that he let out a growl, then like a ghost all around them Zabuza appeared making his eyes go wide open. Then his expression shocked Zabuza a he grin, I'm trembling, with excitement. Go on Sasuke, Kakashi said with a smile. The Uchiha disappeared with a burst of speed, one of the Zabuza who was closest to the boy swung his sword though not fast enough. All the Zabuzas burst like water balloons into puddles. Well, well so you could see that they were water clones, they heard the voice of Zabuza followed by footsteps, the brats improving. The leaf shinobi turned their attention to the direction of the footsteps where they saw Zabuza, the hunter Nin, and of course Naruto. When Kashina's eyes landed on her son she immediately noticed that something was different about him, she wasn't the best sensor but she could feel him emitting a strange energy. Looks like you have a challenger Haku, Zabuza said. So it seems, she said. Naomi reached for her Naginata as she glanced at her brother, this time she would use everything she knew to bring him home. Naomi-chan. 
Sasuke, Kashina drew their attention, I want the two of you take that fake hunter Nin. But Ka-chan, Naomi said. Omi-chan, I will fight Naruto-kun, she said. I know how you feel, but this is something that I have to do. Sakura, Shikamaru, both of you protect Tazuna, Kakashi said revealing his Sharingan. Tazuna along with the two genin backed away from them to watch from afar. Kashina pulled out her tanto as she began to approach Naruto who still looked as calmed as when he first arrived. Zabuza gave a simple nod to Haku who instantly shunshin to reappear in front of both Naomi and Sasuke in her hand she held a handful of senbom. Naruto watched as his bitch of a mother walked towards him, using his left hand he reached up to the string that held his cloak together and unstringed it allowing it to fall to the ground. Kashina stopped walking as she glanced at her son studying him. The blonde in front of her wore black pants, a pair of black combat boots, a sleeveless white shirt. On his waist he still had some kind of belt with multiple pouches. However, something caught her eye the most and that was some kind of crest over his heart. It was shaped in a circle with an X pattern that were connected together. Arceus ring. The place and way he showed it off meant that it was a clan crest. Sochi kun. She spoke cringing at the look of disgust he gave her. Please don't make me do this. I just want you to come home with me. I thought I told you to no longer call me that. As far as I know I have no mother, Naruto said. Please Naruchan, I know we made a mistake but you have to look at it from our point also. When we found out that you had no chakra, we were devastated, we didn't know whether you would die or live, we were afraid, she said. The thought of you never being able to be a shinobi broke Minato kun's heart. He had this whole plan set out of how the two of you would spend your days, of all the things he would teach you. Naruto grit his teeth at the words that kept coming out of her mouth, how dare she tried to blame it on his condition. If you think that just because you tell me all this I will just forgive you, get fucking real bitch, I will never forget the pain that you made me suffer. The nightmares that I had to endure because of you, Naruto growled. I don't want to hurt you, Naru chan, but if it's the only way to bring you home so we can be a family again, then so be it, Kashina yelled as she ran at him. Without missing a beat, Naruto also ran at her with a kanai in his hand. The two met with a clash of steel as her tanto was blocked. The blonde pushed her back as he skidded a couple of steps back and threw his kanai at her. The redhead deflected the knife as she focused on Naruto who brought his hands together and proceeded to create the same bone of blue energy he used against Naomi. That bone must be one of his signature attacks, Kashina thought, well in that case. Kashina sprinted toward him. Naruto seeing her attack jumped over her then proceeded to attack using his bone rush attack. This lead Kunoichi to use her tanto to block the fast strikes from her son, while her other hand reached into her pouch and grabbed a small ball. Pushing him back, Kashina promptly threw the ball hitting Naruto in the face. Arg! cried Naruto as he felt a horrible pain in his eyes, son of a bitch. Kashina watched as Naruto backed away his hands trying to clear out his eyes, what she had thrown at him was a pepper bomb. She knew that it would blind him long enough to incapacitate him. Without wasting any more time four chains burst out of her back heading straight at Naruto who was still in pain. What happened next stunned her as she saw Naruto stop moving, as the chains drew in closer to him. Then the blonde used the same bone to swat the chains away from him before he rushed at her with an angry or more precise a pissed off look on his face. Holding the bone as if it were a sword he swung her, still stunned from what she had seen she had no time to react as the bone crashed into her side sending her crashing into a pillar of the bridge. Ufu Karuto in anger and pain. He felt as though his eyes were on fire after she had hit him with what he now knew was a pepper bomb. Sure it had blinded him and for a second he felt as though he would be tied up, before he remembered the lessons he had with Sir Aaron. Kashina stood back up as she wiped some blood away from her the corner of her mouth, her eyes on Naruto wondering how he was able to block her chains, not only that but attack her while blinded. Naruto calling forth the power of the water plate, gathered a small ball of water in the palm of his hand which he used to wash his eyes. Once he opened his eyes, he glared Kashina, for him playtime was over, as he started to call on the power of the plates. Kashina watched as the same transparent swords that she had seen during their first meeting appear around him again, though she was surprised when a white energy surrounded his body. As Kashina fell into a fighting stance with her tanto ready along with her chains, she saw a smirk on Naruto's face before he disappeared. What? she thought. The blonde reappeared in front of with his bone in hand, as she was about to send her chains at him, once more he vanished from her sight. 
Suddenly she a large amount of pain in her back as she was sent crashing across the bridge. Naruto stood in the spot where she had been with his foot raised glowing with a white energy. How? She thought as she stood up, how is he so fast? He moves almost as fast as mid-level Jonin, not only that his attacks feel stronger. Putting his foot down, he charged at her this time engaging her in a taijutsu fight. Kashina used her forearm to block his kick, before bending to dodge a punch. Naruto growled as tried to punch her again only to receive a powerful chakra enhanced kick to the chin which knocked him on his back. As he jumped back to his feet he felt something on his arm, looking down he saw that he had a chain wrapped around his arm. Not a second later chains burst from the bridge and wrapped around him. Fuck I let my guard down, he cursed in his mind. It's over Naruchan, now that I caught you, my chains will sap away that energy that you're using, Kashina said from her spot. Fucking bitch, think Naruto think, he chanted in his mind as he watches her approach him, swords dance still needs another minute so I can use it. Kashina stood in front of Naruto with tears in her eyes as she looked closely at her son, he looked so much like his father with her face. Then she did the unexpected and wrapped her arms around him noticing that he was slightly taller than her. My baby, she cried. Naruto tried to break free from her as he felt her tears getting his shirt wet. Get the fuck off me bitch, he growled. Naru-chan, she said as she pulled back a bit her hands still on his shoulders, please son come home, I promise that everything will be different. Fuck no, he responded as he began to charge up a lighting attack only for the chains to act as a lightning rod making it useless. He watched as a frown marred her face as she drew in closer to him, at that moment he tilted his head back only for a second later to smash it into her face. Unfortunately for Kashina who was thinking on what to do to try to and make him see that she was indeed sorry didn't anticipate the attack which struck home. The woman stumbled back holding her nose as she felt the warm feeling of blood. Naruto watched with a satisfied grin as he watched her look at him with shock at how he had attacked her. The blonde took a deep breath as his cheeks bulged out before he shot a powerful blast of water at her striking her chest. Though the chains on him didn't slack at all making him even more pissed off than he already was. Kashina wiped the blood from her face as she held her chest, the water attack hit her hard almost as if she had been hit with chakra enhanced punch not Tsunade level, but it still hurt. She saw as the same swords appeared around Naruto once again and how he began to try and break free from his restraints. Those swords, I get it now, they increase his strength, and if I am not wrong the white aura that appears around him must increase his speed, she thought, yet it don't seem like he can use them continuously so they must have a cooldown time before he can power up again. You won't be able to break my adamantine chains Naru-chan, so I suggest that you stop, she said. God damn it, he thought glaring at her, if only I could. While Naruto thought of what ifs, deep inside him a purple plate began to glow before releasing a small pulse of energy. His mother watched as he stopped moving thinking that he finally figured out that it was hopeless for him to break free. Then she saw as how his body began to flicker, before vanishing, the chains that held him back fell to the ground. A few feet behind her Naruto reappeared stumbling as he felt the restraints no longer hold him. Turning his head, he saw her staring at the spot that he had just been in. Teleport, he said. Without a second thought he charged at his mother once again, Kashina heard steps getting close to her. Twisting her head around she met the fist of her son on her cheek, followed by another punch to the stomach, next a strike to the knee almost forcing her to fall forwards, then to finalize the attack, Naruto spun around delivering a powerful kick to the face sending her sprawling onto the bridge. Naruto was about to jump up to deliver one more blow only to stop when the sound of shattering glass echoed through the area. Naruto quickly turned his head in the way it came from and tried to see what was going on. Unfortunately for him the fog was in the way and he could barely make out the dome of ice mirrors that Haku made. Though he could see make out someone getting up outside of the dome, he felt a horrible sensation in his stomach. Haku, Naruto said worried for his partner, fuck, sorry Zabuza, defog. Kashina who groggily stood up watched in fascination as Naruto spread his arms and a pair of spectral wings appeared on them then began to glow blue before he flapped them releasing a powerful wind that began to clear away the fog. The sight that revealed before them made the blonde blood run cold as he saw Naomi running straight at Haku with a swirling blue ball of chakra in her hand. Haku stood motionless as tears fell from her eyes, her mask laid in pieces on the ground. Haku. 
shouted the blonde as he took one step forward vanishing from Kashina's sight as she watched her daughter about to deliver the final blow. Naomi blinded with anger toward the bitch in front of her, she blamed her for her beloved Onisama's hate towards her. She had seduced him, and now she wanted her dead, without her, Naruto would surely return home with her once Kakashi killed that bastard Zabuza. As she approached her with her Rasengan in hand, just as she was a few feet away from her, something she didn't see coming happened. Naruto out thin air appeared in front of Haku stunning the girl as she watched him or more specifically his hands that were slightly separated as small rocks started gathering in between them forming a larger rock. With a roar Naruto fired the small boulder in his hands striking Naomi in the chest sending her flying back and the Rasengan in her hands evaporating. Naomi on the other hand was in a world of pain as she felt her ribs break from the powerful impact of the rock that she'd been hit with. As if that wasn't enough she ended up crashing into the railing of the bridge causing a small explosion. Haku saw as her partner's breathing was rather ragged and heavy, that attack seemed to take a lot out of him, soon enough he fell onto one knee trying to catch his breath. Are, you, alright? he asked. Naruto-kun, she said before they heard something that sounded like a bunch of angry birds chirping. Both turned their heads to see the last of the fog clear up, to see their mentor and father figure being held down by a pack of dogs as Kakashi had a hand covered in lightning. Zabuza, Sama. Both teens shouted together. Haku was about to run to him as Naruto also tried to movo not respond at all. Shit, that last move drained me, he said in his mind as he tried to force himself to move. Both teens suddenly ceased any movement as they felt something holding them back. Kagemane no Jutsu, successful, came a voice. From the corner of his eye he saw the pink head and the pineapple haired him staring at them. The boy was on one knee with a black line stretched out in front of him leading to both Haku and him. Squelch. Splash. The sound hit them as they watched Kakashi drive his lightning encased hand through Zabaza's chest. No one moved or made a sound as they all saw the sight of Team 7's leader kill one of the seven swordsmen of the mist. Tear flowed down Haku's face as she saw her father in all but blood be killed in front of her just how her mother had been killed in front of her. Zabuza. Naruto shouted in anger as his body sent out a blinding flash of energy erasing the shadow that held him down. As soon as he was free he exploded from his spot running straight at Kakashi his hand balled into a fist as it began to glow. Kakashi who was tired from his fight turned to the sound of the shout just in time to see his sensei's son slam his glowing fist into his chest knocking him away. With the man out of the way he turned his attention to the growling of dogs as he saw them release his master and run at him. Though they all vanished in a cloud of smoke as he saw multiple senbon embedded into the summoning scroll on the ground. Zabuza, oi don't you dare close your fucking eyes, Naruto said as he placed a hand on the man's chest trying to heal him. Haku also placed her hands on him and tried her best to keep him alive. D don't cough bb both bother, he said weakly, I cough it's to too much. No, damn it Zabuza don't leave us you bastard, Naruto cried as he saw the light in his eyes begin to fade. Take, go good, care, of cough Haku, he said as his body went limp and the last of the light in his eyes faded. Zabuza. Screamed the blonde to the sky as tears streaked down his face. Haku covered her face with her hands as she cried. The Konoha team regrouped as they watched them mourn the loss of their sensei, Kashina held her daughter who was still healing from Naruto's attack. Nisama, she said as she turned to look at Sakura who was cradling Sasuke's head on her lap having removed the needles from him. Ha 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 ha, so the mighty demon of the mist died at the hands of some sniveling brats, a voice laughed. Naruto turned his head and Haku uncovered her face as they saw their employer coming close to them with a large group of thugs around him. Gato, he growled, what the fuck are you doing here? Hey, I came here to tell you that your services are no longer required, see shinobi are too expensive, so I gather these fine gentlemen to come with me, they finish you off and I get some women to play with, he said. What did you just fucking say? Oh you bad at hearing or something, oh well not my problem. I will be taking his head and cashing in his bounty, and I will take that little cunt you have there and I will make her my new toy then give her to these gentlemen to have fun with, Gato said. Go on men, kill them all, but leave the girls alive they will be my entertainment. The thugs around the short man all grinned as they looked at the girls while getting their weapons ready to charge. Naruto stared down at the prone form of the man who taught him and cared for him since he was young. Anger was the only thing he felt at the moment. 
Anger at not being able to defeat Kashina fast enough to help him. Angry at how they had been tricked by the short bastard who promised them a big reward if they killed the bridge builder. Now how that same bastard betrayed them and was now planning to kill them. Haku watched as the 200 thugs that Gato brought with him began to move towards them. She got ready by pulling out her senbon. Yet before she made her move Naruto had stood up and began to walk in the direction of Gato with his head down. The thugs all stopped as they saw him approach them. Some laughed at the pathetic sight of one person coming to his death. The blonde though stopped not too far away from Haku as he lifted his head up and glared at the group. I'm gonna kill you, it's because of you that the man who I considered my father is dead now. Naruto glared straight at Gato as he stretched out his hand. The Konoha group was trying to figure out how to help stop them when they heard a rattling sound, their attention turned to the source. Embedded on the bridge was the Kabikirabocho which was shaking making the sound, then it freed itself and flew through the air past Haku, as the blade passed by Naruto, the blonde grasped the handle. Without another word, he let out a war cry and ran straight at the enemy. The thugs were shocked as they saw him somehow summon the sword from the other side of the bridge that they didn't react in time when his was upon them. Naruto swung the sword horizontally cutting the first one in half, with a half spin he sliced open the chest of another. Not stopping he began his deadly dance cutting down the members of Gato's men. Said man watched from afar as the blonde bastard cut his group down in horror at what he was seeing, in less than 30 seconds he had cut down about 20 men. The remaining thugs all snapped out of their stupor and began to engage the kid. Naruto blocked the incoming strikes and pushed them back and spinning cutting six of them together. Reacting quickly, he dodged a strike coming from behind by back flipping over the offender and cutting him down the middle. With a roar he hurled the blade like a boomerang which cut down anything in its path. From his right wrist two green vines emerged which he used to wrap a man's neck with before spinning using the body as a battering ram to strike the others down. The Konoha group were feeling sick to their stomachs, while the genin were as they saw a person there again dismember the thugs without any remorse. It wasn't just that, the vines that sprouted from his wrist also made the queasy. The Uchiha who had finally woken up was more pissed than anything as he saw the loser showing how much stronger he was. Naruto crossed his arms on his chest as he blasted out a wave of lighting hitting anyone close to him. Throwing his arms out his fingernail elongated into claws as he proceeded to jump into the middle of the group and began slashing them down. As he was cutting down his prey one of them tried to ambush him, but with stopped leafs started circling around the brad before they shot out. The leafs cut through their skin like a hot knife through butter. The blonde they used the same vines to retrieve the sword from where it was and continued to cut down anything in his path. The remaining thugs were starting to back away fearing for their lives as they watched a single person cut down their numbers at an alarming rate. As a large group surrounded Naruto who glanced at all of them trying to get to him. A smirk plastered his face as he crouched down before jumping high above them, in the air he inhaled before shooting out a powerful stream of fire that burned the group. Those who had been caught in the fire were running around trying to put it out as the smell of burning flesh penetrated the ozone. Some jumped over the bridge while others just rolled around the ground. Those who had yet to approach the blonde cut their losses and began to run away not caring one bit for the money that they were promised. Where the fuck are you assholes running to? Shouted the shorty, get you fucking asses ba. The short man was cut off as a shadow loomed over him, the man fell on his shaking in fear as he saw the blonde glaring down at him. His once white shirt was now dyed red from the blood of all his kills. WW wait, he tried to beg, D don't kill me, I can give you anything you want. Then bring Zabuza back to life, Naruto said emotionless. I can't do that, Gato said trying to crawl away. Naruto raised the blade before bringing it down stabbing the man through the back straight thr a powerful swing he sent him flying. Watching the short man fall through the air he pointed two fingers at him. A small ball of energy began to form in his fingertips before more energy began to gather making it bigger. Burn in hell motherfucker, hyperbeam! shouted the blonde releasing the energy in his fingers in large beam that struck Gato's body. Naruto turned around and began to walk back to where Haku was with Zabaza's body, as he passes the bodies of some of the thugs he failed to notice one of them stirring. Passing through and nearing his partner, the man jumped to his feet and ran straight at Naruto with a katana in hand. Naru-chan, yelled Kashina running toward him felt something zip by her. Stunning everyone a tri-pronged kanai landed next to the young blonde. 
What happened next fell like slow motion as they all saw a yellow flash. Naruto felt someone push him away as he turned his head he saw the one person he wanted to see the least. Minato was in his spot a Rasengan in his hand. The ball hit the man who was planning to stab him sending him spiraling over the bridge. Minato turned his attention to Naruto who had sat up and was glaring at him. Naruto-kun, said Minato seeing his son for the first time in nearly a decade, you've grown my son. You. Naruto screamed jumping back landing next to Haku only to fall to his knees. Not good, not good at all. I am in no condition to fight, and there's no way I can fight him. The only I can do now is grab Haku and try escape. Minato-kun, Tu-chan, called out the two red heads. Minato walked past Naruto heading straight to his wife and daughter and engulfed both of them in a hug. I'm here don't worry, he said. The younger blonde watched them bawling his fist in anger, though he didn't do anything, instead he stood and his body began to glow healing what he could. Feeling slightly better, but still tired he placed the sword on his back then grabbed Haku and Zabaza's body. Kashina saw his movement, quickly breaking out of Minato's grasp she went to try and stop her baby. Chains shot out to try and hold him. It was too late for her as Naruto vanished along with the girl and his kidnapper's body. Naruto. The woman fell to her knees tears flowing down her face, she had been near her boy now he was gone again. She felt a hand on her shoulder as she looked up to see her husband looking at her a small smile on his face. Don't worry Kushi-chan, I place a Hiroshin marker on him, he said looking up to the other side of the nearly completed bridge, we'll find him, and when we do we'll take him home, though for now let's go treat everyone's wounds and get some rest, once we're all rested we will go after him. I was so tempted to end this here but since I've been gone for a while I will go a little further lol. Elsewhere Naruto and Haku reappeared a couple of miles away from Nami. Haku felt slightly nauseous after the jump, Naruto on the other hand fell forward unconscious. The girl quickly checked on her friend and saw that he was asleep from exhaustion a sad smile made its way to her face as she removed the sword from his back. Reaching into one of his pouches she pulls out a scroll from which she unsealed a blanket she used to cover him. Standing up she went in search of some wood to make a small campfire. Wave the Konoha group plus the Hokage sat around the small table in Tazuna's kitchen talking about the details of the mission. Well Minato and Tazuna were discussing about how the small nation was going to pay the leaf for the mission. What had started as a C rank went to a B when the Demon Brothers showed up, then went to a when Zabuza showed up. Though after that from what Kashina had told him the mission was on borderline with a low S rank mission. However, he knew that Nami would never be able to pay for an S so he left it as an A rank. Sensei. What's the plan on capturing Naruto now? asked Kakashi. For now you need to rest up, we don't know the full extent of Naruto's powers, from what I saw during his fight with Kashina he didn't show everything, Minato said standing up and walking to the window, though I will say this, we will be moving on him soon so you may have to take a soldier pill. Tu Chan, Naomi spoke, Onisama was never a shinobi so it means that he can come home and be in trouble right? Yeah, he wasn't a shinobi. But that doesn't mean that he will not be punished, Minato said, he was in league with a missing nin. But, but he was brainwashed by him, you can't blame Onisama for that, cried Naomi. Sweetheart, I know how you feel about Naruto, but I also have to think about the well-being of the village, he said, but I will do all that is in my power to make sure that he will be alright. Okay, she said, we should all go and get some rest, said Kashina. No one protested as they filed out of the kitchen to the rooms that Tazuna had provided them with. Kashina, Naomi, I'm so sorry for what I'm about to do, Minato whispered. Naruto and Haku Naruto stood next to Haku as they stared at their deceased mentor. After waking up, Naruto and Haku began to create a funeral pyre to cremate Zabuza. The two didn't need to speak at all as they made the pyre, though both had tears on their faces they had been with the man for so long that they were a small family. Naruto took a step to the pyre and released a small stream of flame that began to burn the pyre and the body. Doing this would prevent anyone from obtaining the secrets that his body held. Naruto pulled the girl along with him as he went to sit at the base of a tree and pulled her onto his lap allowing her to cry into his chest. We're gonna be alright Haku-chan, Naruto said rubbing her back. But what are we gonna do now? We're so used to doing what Zabuza-sama, how are gonna do what we used to do without his guidance? asked Haku. We'll think of a way to live, don't worry for now we can. Return to Konoha, a voice said cutting Naruto off. 
Both teens jumped to their feet into their combat stance as they look at the direction the voice came from. The voice was familiar to Naruto, he glared as he watched his family along with Team 7 appear from the tree lines. Minato was in the front and on each side of him was his wife and daughter, Kakashi stood behind them with his team. Naruto, I think it's time for you to come home, the older blonde said taking a step closer though stop when he saw the Kabikirabocho flew into Naruto's outstretched hand. Like hell I'm returning to that godforsaken village, Naruto spat. Without any emotion Minato spoke, Naruto you either return peacefully or else. Or else what? Very well, the Hokage sighed as he reached into his pouch and pulled out a piece of paper. Namikaze Naruto, you are hereby under arrest by order of the Council of Konohagakure no Sato. Minato, Tio Yu Chan. First I don't go by that fucking name anymore, my name is Arusius Naruto. Second under what charges, Naruto said, in case your fucking brain isn't working I was never a shinobi under your fucking rule, I was a civilian and civilians can leave whenever the fuck they want. You are charged with having affiliation with a high ranking missing nin, and for the murders of 58 leaf shinobis, 9 of which were main branch Hyugas, 5 branch Hyugas, 5 Yamanaka, 2 Nara, and 3 Akamichi, Minato said. Kashina covered her mouth in shock as she fell to the ground not able to believe that it had been her baby who had committed those kills. Shikamaru who had heard about the deaths of his clansmen glared at the blonde something that was unusual for Inara. Hemp, they were shinobi. They should have have known of the dangers of pursuing such a career, said Naruto. Just give yourself up there is no place where you can run to that I can't find you now, after all I did mark you at the bridge, the Hokage said. Fuck, if he tagged me then there really isn't anything I can do, no, first thing I have to do is grab Haku teleport as far as away as I can, then leave her so they don't capture her, thought Naruto. Naruto, Haku said placing a hand on his shoulder looking at him sadly, there's no let's give up. Haku, he said looking down at the sword in his hand, and with a sigh he dropped the weapon, run. Removing himself from her grasp Naruto teleported to appear in front of Minato delivering a punch to the man. The punch never connected as the man banished in a yellow flash to appear behind Naruto. Gritting his teeth, he teleported again away from the man. Get out of here Haku, I'll hold them as long as I can, Naruto said. Before Haku could respond Shane sprouted from the ground wrapping around Haku. His eyes went wide as he saw Kashina restrain his teammate as he was about to teleport to her Minato appeared before him. The cage delivered a powerful punch to Naruto making him double over in pain, he then grabbed him by the back of his shirt. Reaching into his cloak he pulled out a black collar with a red gem in the center. Faster than Naruto could reach Minato strapped the collar on him. Naruto fell to the ground as he used his hand to try to remove what had just been placed on him only to feel a powerful surge of pain go through his body. The last thing he saw was his sister running to him before he blacked out. It had been a week since the mission to wave and a long week since the capture of his son Naruto, and it had been the longest week of his life. Sitting at his desk with his hand holding his head was Minato, reading over the latest demands of the council. Sighing he crumpled the paper into a ball and threw into the trash bin. The Hokage stood up from his seat and turned to the window that allowed him to look at the entire village. Though his eyes instantly landed on a single tower that stood away from the busy marketplace. The Anbu headquarters and the place that his son was currently held in after being brought to the village. Once he had arrived to the village the council had been waiting for him, and had instantly demanded that Naruto be sent to the holding cells in the Anbu tower until the trial was ready. Seeing how it had been the shinobi side who had demanded it he had no choice but to send him. After seeing the young girl Haku, and hearing about her Keke Jenke, the civilian council tried to demand that she be branded with a prisoner seal and be handed to the Uchiha to help him with the repopulation of his clan. He wasn't happy with the demand that he told them to fuck off and that she wouldn't be forced to be a slave as that's not what the village stands for. After that he took the girl to his home where she had been staying for the last week. He could tell that there was a lot of tension with the girl and his daughter, even Kashina had something against the girl. Letting out a heavy sigh he returned to his seat to continue his work. Naomi Naomi sat quietly eating her bowl of ramen at the favorite restaurant, though for the last week she hadn't been able to truly enjoy her favorite food. Ever since they had returned to the village from that mission her mind has been on her brother who was being treated like a criminal. Sure he had been in league with a missing ninja and had probably killed many shinobi, but he had never once been a shinobi so why treat him like one? 
Then on top of things her father had decided to bring that bitch Haku to their home to keep an eye on her or so he said. What pissed her off the most was that Haku was staying in her dear Onisama's room and she rarely left the room even to eat. He mother had been the one to take her food to the room and many times she had tried to make a conversation with the girl to find out more about Naruto, but she hardly spoke at all. Letting out a frustrated growl Naomi stood up and placed some money on the counter for her food and headed out. Behind the counter a pretty brunette watched sadly as one of her dear friends seemed to be troubled, ever since the capture of her brother she had been sulking. She didn't eat her ramen with gusto anymore. Oto-san, do you think she will be okay? The brunette asked. I hope so dear, I hope so, responded her father as he stood next to her with a hand on her shoulder. I've known Minato for a long time now and I am sure he will do everything in his power to help his son, then we will have the old Naomi back. As the young redhead walked through the streets of the village she could see the hypocrites waving at her or bowing. Sometimes she hated them for all the pain they caused her brother when it was disclosed that he was born without the ability to use chakra. Her mind traveled to Haku, the girl who knew Naruto the best aside from Zabuza, that girl pissed her off. She remembers her ignore her mother when she had asked her to tell her about Naruto, she had also been ignored by the ice girl. Naomi Chan, the blonde girl heard her name called out. Stopping the blonde turned around to see one of her closest friends since she was a child, the heir of the Hyuga clan, Hanada. The young Hyuga has waist-length indigo color hair, white eyes, and wore a pair of short shorts, a midriff mesh shirt or sports bra, and a purple jacket. The girl wore a seductive-looking smile on her face. Hanada, Naomi greeted her with a small smile and a twitch in her eye, when did you get back from your mission? We just got back about an hour ago. She said before a frown appeared on her face, what's this I hear about that bastard Naruto being captured? He should have been killed on sight after all he did abandon the village and from what I heard he has killed multiple of our shinobi. Naomi frowned at the way her friend talked about her beloved brother, Hanada please don't talk that way about Nisama. Nisama? She refers to that asshole as Nisama, thought Hanada as she gritted her teeth at the way Naomi referred to Naruto. You really shouldn't refer to a criminal as such now Chan, said Hanada getting close to the blonde and cupping her chin, why don't you and I go somewhere more private? Hanada please how many times do I have to tell you to not say such shameless things, said Naomi with a deadpanned expression, anyways I'll talk to you later Hanada, I have too many things on my mind that I need to think about. Hanada watched with a frown as her best friend and love interest walked away with her hand rubbing the back of her head. Naruto. I swear I won't let you have her, swore Hinata. Kashina, Haku Haku stood next to the window looking out to the backyard of the Namikaze compound. For the last week it had been hell for her, she had never felt so alone. It was only a week ago that she was with her family, but that family had lost a member in Zabuza, then they had been captured by the Hokage. While Naruto was sent to prison, she had been brought to the Hokage's house to be kept an eye on. Glancing back at the room she could see some clothes that had been given to her by Kashina. Kashina, that was another problem in the household, every time she was in the same room as her the redhead would ask her to tell her about Naruto. Of course she just kept quiet, it wasn't her place to tell her anything. That's why she tried to stay in the room as much as she could only, going out to use the bathroom and sometimes get something to eat. Haku could smell whatever Kashina was cooking at the moment, knowing her she was probably making ramen again. That was one thing she truly disliked, ramen, it's not that she hated the dish, far from it, but they ate it almost constantly. Kashina was making it to take some to Naruto, but Haku knew that Naruto had a certain hate for that food. She could remember the amount of times he ate ramen since Zabuza found him and the dates he ate it. Meanwhile downstairs Kashina was humming as she stirred the ramen she was making, she knew that the trial for her son was coming, and that had her terrified as to what the council would decide to do with him. She knew Minato would do his best to protect him all she had to do was believe in him. Tasting the broth, she smiled as it was now perfect. Grabbing a bowl, she poured some of the ramen and covered it before placing it in a basket. Removing her apron and hanging it up she picked her basket and headed to the front door stopping for M.T. heirs to the bedroom where Haku was. With a tired sigh she walked out the door. Naruto deep within the Anbu headquarters sitting inside a cell that was guarded by two of the Hokage elite Anbu was Naruto. The blonde sat in a corner wearing a set of white robes, his knees to his chest as he looked at the ceiling. 
He had lost track of how long he had been in here for a bit until he heard the guards talk about some trial that was happening the next day. From there he also learned that he had been inside the cell for a week. A long week since he had last seen Hiku Chan, just thinking about her he wondered where she was being held and in what shape she was in. Knowing the council, he knew that they would try something against her for the sake of getting her Keke Jenke. Naruto's hand reached up to his neck where that damned collar was preventing him from leaving the cell. From what he had discovered about the collar was that it if he went got a certain distance it would immobilize him. Closing his eyes, he tried to get some more sleep when he heard the door to his creek open, opening a single eye he watched as the Anbu let someone in. His eyes fully opened a scowl on his face. Naruto watched as Kashina stepped into the cell with a basket in her hands. Naruto-chan, she greeted him with a smile. What the fuck do you want this time? Naruto growled. For as long as he had been here, Kashina had taken it upon herself to visit him, oftentimes bringing him food. And to tell the truth he was fed up with her trying to get him to forgive her. I came to talk and bring you something to eat, Kashina said biting her lower lip. Well I'm interested in talking with you or hungry so why? Naruto said before his stomach let out a loud growl. Kashina brought her hand to her mouth and let out a small giggle at how Naruto's stomach seemed to disagree with him. Walking further into the cell she sat on the bed and placed the basket on the floor. Opening the basket, she pulled out the large bowl of ramen she had prepared earlier and held it out to him with a smile. I don't want it, Naruto said turning away. Please eat Naruto-chan, I know that you don't get much food here, and I worked hard on it. Kashina said with a sad smile as she looked at the shape her baby was in. With a glare Naruto looked at her, I don't want it and leave I don't want to see your face. Naruto, the redhead looked down, however one thing she noticed was he hadn't outright insulted her yet like how he did when they first met on the road to Nami. Naruto just glared at his so-called mother and turned his attention to the wall, ever since he started to use aura, he had felt calmer and his mind clearer but no matter what he still held hate for the village and his parents for what they did to him when he was younger. Sochi, please eat, and I will tell you about Hiku-chan, Kashina said hoping that using the girl's name would get some reaction. Naruto snapped his head back and gazed at her, he had wanted to know how Haku was doing and if eating that garbage was the only way to know, he would eat it. Without saying a word, he took the bowl from her hands. Kashina had tears in her eyes as she saw her son finally accept her food even if she had to coerce him. For the last week Haku has been staying with us at the compound, Kashina said, she hardly comes out of the room that we gave her, though when she does she goes to the roof and gazes at the stars for hours. The blonde listened to her talk as he ate the ramen she brought him, even if he didn't like it, he would eat it. Though she hasn't had it any easier than you, even if she's not inside a cell like yours she is still treated poorly by the village. The red head continues as she pulled out a thermos and pout some tea, when the council found out that she has a keke jenke, they started making demands for her to be used to breed more Hyatt users. Crash Kashina jumped to her feet as she heard something break, before she could do anything else she was lifted off her feet by her throat and slammed into the wall. Her eyes landed on Naruto's and winced when she saw them glowing blue with a furious look on his face. What the fuck did you just say? He roared, if they so much as touch one hair on her head I will raise this village to the ground. Minato, stopped, them, Kashina managed to whisper. With a growl the blonde released her and moved back, as Kashina hit the floor coughing and trying to catch her breath. Naruto was incensed at the thought of the village using Haku as a breeding tool, but at least that bastard did something right. The cell door busted open and three Anbu rushed in with their weapons in hand and immediately surrounded Naruto when they saw Kashina on the floor with her hand on her throat. Stop, Kashina called out, go back to your post. But Kashina-sama, the one with blonde purple hair said, it's okay nothing happened, she said standing up. The female Anbu narrowed her eyes behind her mask as she glanced at her neck. The black ops sigh and had her team fall back. Sochi. Leave. I want to be alone, Naruto said pressing his forehead to the wall. The redhead picked her basket up and giving Naruto a worried glance she walked out of the cell, but not before hearing Naruto whisper something. The next day Haku woke up startled from the knocking on the bedroom door. Standing up she straightened out her kimono she walked to the door and opened it to reveal Minato standing there. Haku please get dressed, the trial will start soon, he said. The brunette nodded and closed the door to get ready. Minato stood in his full Hokage robes as he waited for Haku to come down, his wife and daughter had already left earlier. 
When he heard footsteps he saw the girl walking down the stair wearing a pink kimono with a white sash. I am ready Hokage-sama, she said. Minato approached the girl and placed a chakra suppression seal on her. Then he grabbed her shoulder and using his Hiroshin teleported to the council room. When they appeared Haku noticed that the room was full, on one side sat the civilians all dressed in their most expensive clothes. On the other side sat the shinobi council also dressed in expensive clothes, but on this side she noticed that the genins that they had fought sat behind along with more what seemed to be the heirs. In the center sat the three elders and standing next to an empty chair was an elder man with a pipe in his mouth. The Hokage pointed to two empty chairs in the middle, no words were needed as she went straight for the chair to sit down. While sitting there she could feel the eyes of the people in the room on her. Her eyes scanned the room without moving her head, seeing the civilians giving her a look of hunger and lust, though she was more perturbed with the looks the Uchiha brat was giving her. The doors to the room opened with a squad of black ops walking in with a handcuffed Naruto in the middle wearing white robes. He didn't say anything as he walked to the empty chair, before he could sit Haku stood up and wrapped her arms around him giving him a small kiss on the cheek. Naruto-kun, she said. I am glad you're okay, Haku-chan, responded the blonde softly. Naomi watched from her spot behind her mother as the two hugged each other with a huge frown as she should be the one holding her Onisama like that. From a few seat away Hinata's eyes were focused on the blonde filled with anger towards him. Take a seat, Minato said with authority from his seat. Naruto turned his head and glared at the man but sat down nonetheless. We have gathered today to decide the fate of these two shinobi, the Hokage said, first Yuki Haku, you are accused of being in league with a rouge shinobi from Kirigakure no Sato, Momochi Zabuza, after a thorough investigation we have found no records of you as a member of Kiri's forces. Hokage-sama, spoke up an old man who had half of his face covered, if I may say, the girl has an extremely rare Keke Jenke, so it would be best to have her create the Yuki clan here. Haku felt an extreme fear as she heard the man say that she's Shouri. She saw Naruto tense up releasing a growl and looked as if he was about to jump from his seat to tear the man up. Danzo, we will not resort to using her as such so keep such comments to yourself, Minato said, now Namikaze. Arusius, Naruto interrupted, my name is Arusius Naruto, you blonde bastard. People gasped in shock at the way Naruto spoke to the Hokage, others narrowed their eyes at what he had called himself. Kashina eyes watered a bit hearing him deny his family name, while Naomi giggled slightly at her brother's comment. With narrowed eyes Minato continued, Arusius Naruto, you're charged with having affiliation with a high-ranking missing nin, and for the murders of 58 leaf shinobis, nine main and five branch Hayugas, five Yamanaka, two Nara, and three Akamichi. Naruto could feel the killing intent being sent his way by the many head of clans who heard of their member's death, though he just shrugged it off as if it was nothing. In this case you would be executed where you sit for treason. Please, as if, you know the laws of this place, only shinobi under the Hokage's command can be charged with treason, Naruto said. I was a civilian and there is no law stating that a civilian must remain in the village for his whole life, never did I become a shinobi. Be as it is, you are still a member of my clan and I never authorize you to be allowed to leave my clan or village, said Minato, as such you will still receive punishment for the murders of the shinobi. Tisk, what a bunch of hypocrites you are, if they didn't want to die then they should have stayed as civilians, once you put that headband on it means that your life will always be on danger, you never know if you will make it back to your house. So charging me such petty charges well you can shove them up your ass, Naruto said standing up. All around the shinobi were in deep thought, the brat had been right about the dangers of being a shinobi, yet they were angry that it was a person from their own village that had killed them. More so in the point that the person who had killed them was the failure of the Namikaze family. Hokage-sama, Danzo spoke up once again drawing attention, it seems to me that the boy feels no regret for what he did. Therefore I believe death would be the best punishment, but he won't feel any regret, so I propose that he be sent to Hazuka Castle for the rest of his life. People all around were speechless, the blood prison was the place where the most dangerous of criminals were sent. The people all around the room started to talk among themselves regarding the punishment. I believe that would be a fitting punishment, Minato said after thinking it over. Minato shouted Kashina who jumped to her feet with an angry look on her face and tears falling freely from her eyes, you can't be serious? Odo-sama, whispered Naomi, 
However we need not be hasty, Minato spoke again, from what the reports, and the things I saw I believe that his chakraless skills would be going to waste, so I think that we should give him a choice, either join the Konoha ranks or be sent to Hazuka castle. Hokage-sama, don't be ridiculous, this boy needs not be given the opportunity to become stronger, send him to Hazuka castle, and then as Danzo-sama stated we give the girl to Uchiha Sasuke to be used to repopulate the Uchiha clan, spoke a civilian. Before anyone could tell the man to shut up and loud snap echoed through the room and a chair was sent crashing into the Anbu that was standing close to Naruto. Before anyone could make a move Naruto appeared in front of the civilian who had spoken his arm pulled back, hand curled into a fist, and his fist glowing white. The man couldn't move or respond in time as Naruto smashed his fist into his face sending flying back crashing deep into the wall. The shock lasted only for a few seconds before the Anbu jumped to restrain Naruto. Minato made a single hand sign. The necklace on Naruto glowed before he fell to the ground gritting his teeth in pain as he struggled to look at the bastard. The masked shinobi pulled him back to the center of the room dropping him onto the ground with their swords ready in case he attacked. The shinobi were stunned they at first hadn't believed that the boy could use some sort of ninjutsu with no chakra now seeing it themselves many began to make plans. Danzo was making as many plans as he could to try and get the boy under his command. With him he could take over the village faster. He had had his Sharingan locked on the boy and saw when he moved and attacked, he didn't see a single ounce of chakra. Naruto glared at the man as he tried to stand up, but his body felt as if he had been hit with a super thunderbolt. Naruto kun are you alright? asked a worried Haku kneeling next to him. This bastard, Naruto thought looking from Minato to Danzo, if I choose the prison I will be away from Haku and I won't be able to protect her at all so that one eye mummy will try something against her, though if I become on the bastard's lapdogs, I'll be close to Haku to protect her, either way I lose in the end. Fine you bastard, if that's your fucking game, I'll become one of your lapdogs, Naruto said. Naruto-kun. Thought Haku. Thank goodness, Kashina said with a smile. Now we'll be together Onisama, Naomi thought. The clan heads were not too happy with what the brat was offered but they would try to get his DNA into their clans one way or another. Hayuga Hiyashi, stared at the boy with his Baikugan blazing, and wondered what it was that powered the boy. He had seen something inside of him send a burst of power to his fist. His eye glanced to his eldest daughter who was heatedly glaring daggers at him. Knowing her infatuation with Minato's daughter she might be able to get close to the boy if not he still had his youngest Hanabi. With Naruto's agreement to join Konoha's forces I take it if offered you will accept also Haku-san. Hi, Hokage-sama, Haku said without looking at the man. Well then this trial is over and escort them to my office, Minato said using his Hiroshin to return to his office. The end. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.